Brett Hallman has the LSU Fighting Tigers back on track. He lured Alabama's Mr. Football, Robert Davis, to Baton Rouge, now averaging seven yards a carry. Darryl McCorvey leads a veteran secondary with Carlton Buckles. Since Pat Dye came to Auburn, these Tigers are tops in SEC titles. Quarterback Stan White's favorite target is tight end Fred Baxter. Tigers everywhere today, Auburn hosting LSU. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college football, the Southeastern Conference. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Stability is just one of our benefits. And by new Coders 29 and 29 Light. Cold aged at 29 degrees to seal in smoothly. Welcome to Auburn, Alabama, Jordan Hare Stadium, the home of the Tigers. Auburn, that is, as the Fighting Tigers of LSU come visiting for a hot afternoon of SEC football. Good afternoon, I'm Bob Carpenter. Welcome to Auburn, another sizzler here in the South today. And a couple of ball clubs that hope to move to that warm side of the dial as far as their records are concerned. They have each split their first two ball games. A&M handled LSU two weeks ago, but the Tigers came back with a very good win over the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. And then Auburn, a loser at Ole Miss. Rebels have turned out to be very good so far, but they totally outmanned Samford a week ago. Let's talk about the Bayou Bengals with the old defensive back Tim Foley. And what about Daigle and Luke, the quarterbacks, Tim? Is it a quarterback controversy because they're both so similar? Now, Curley is going to start one or the other depending on who does the best the week before. And this week, Jesse Daigle gets the call. He led the Tigers back to a, a victory over Mississippi State. But they're both good athletes. And no matter who the quarterback is, they're going to turn around and throw it to a quartet of true freshman running backs led by Robert Davis, who ran for 125 yards in his college debut against a very good Texas A&M defense. Those 8,200 plus yards for those four freshmen, about five miles of running as high school seniors a year ago. Meanwhile, the Tigers of Auburn, around the country, they're considered a bit conservative offensively. And with Stan White at the controls, what about Pat Dye's offense? Well, I think inefficient last year would have been a better word to define their offense. And of course, the quarterback gets the blame. But against Ole Miss, Stan White throws it for 400 yards. He's doing his job. In order for Auburn to beat LSU, they must run the ball effectively against the Tigers. And wear them down on a very, very hot and muggy day. But LSU's front defensively played very well against Mississippi State a week ago and they also had some very big plays on special teams so LSU has the momentum but Auburn has the home field advantage Tigers all over the place when we come back to Auburn it's a hot day and a good day for shades here in Auburn Alabama Jordan Harris Stadium where it's going to be about 90 degrees with 90 percent humidity at game time. The guy who knows all about that is Bob Kessling on the sidelines, but he also knows about a few changes in the kicking games today, Bob. Yeah, Bob, it's a big a blow for the LSU Tigers. Pedro Suarez, their veteran senior place kicker, has been left at home. He's on an indefinite suspension. They hope he might be back for next week. The big loss for there is he's hitting 77% of his field goal attempts for his career. His replacement today, Mike uh, camp and he is 0 for 4 so far this year, so field goal kicking might be a big story in this game. For LSU. Meanwhile, for the Auburn Tigers, a bit of good news. Thomas Bailey, who was sensational last year returning punts and kicks, will dress today. Now, they say he will not return kicks, but he will play wide receiver. He broke his jaw the first day of pads. His jaw has been wired for the last three weeks. He's lost 20 pounds, but he should play today, and he might be a bigger threat now for the Auburn offense. We can't tell you it's hot down here, but, Bob, at least there is a bit of a breeze to cool things off a bit. They say winds from the southwest at 7. We'll see if that's a factor at all. Special teams could be a factor today when those defenses get tired on the field. Back with the opening kickoff after a word from your local station. Auburn and LSU both 1-1 one one on the season, but the Tigers have a conference win. Auburn does not. A loser at Ole Miss a couple of weeks ago. And they get set for action here this afternoon as the captains huddle out at midfield and the coin has been tossed and we'll find out who's kicking and who's receiving here momentarily.
couple of clubs that have been around in this league for a long, long time, but they haven't played each other that much. We'll take a look at the season by season series uh, in just a few minutes, but LSU, it looks like, has chosen to take the football. Auburn wins the toss and will defer, so LSU will have it. High 80s, winds, just a bit of a breeze. Look at the humidity, and we have a 60% chance of rain in the area today. Weather definitely could be a factor depending on whose defense spends most of the time on the field today. 15-10-1, LSU leads the series. Last two games have been very, very close. Auburn won the 1989 game here by a score of 10 to 6. That was the most recent meeting between the two. Tim, maybe we need to get these guys some makeup. They have been very camera shy. LSU losing 14 of 15 and Auburn losing the last six. We should try to hide the cameras behind the hedges down there. Well, both these are very good football teams. When they do, do get on television, that's a, usually a highly contested ball game. And and both of them have a, a great chance of coming out on top today. This would be a hard one to pick. Brian Karkoska will be the kickoff man for the Auburn Tigers. They have a whole bunch of kickers on this team. Two other place kickers, but this guy will handle the kickoffs. Gary Pegues and David Butler back to receive. Pegues number 11, Butler wearing number 40. Butler is their big return man, but Pegues is shown to be a dangerous man on special teams as well. The kick will be to David Butler right at the goal line. He looks up and fumbles it, gets a good bounce, and he will only get out to the 16, maybe the 17-yard line before Anthony Harris got him on special teams, a return of 17 after the unforced error on the fumble. So the LSU Tigers, a multiple offensive team, facing a multiple defense. There's Jesse Daigle, a 5'11 junior out of Catholic High School in Baton Rouge. He's thrown for a couple of touchdowns already. He's even caught a pass. Tigers with two wide receivers out to the left side and split backs. And the give is to number five, Robert Davis, and Auburn's defense says, no, sir. Maybe a yard or so. Let's check the LSU starting lineup. Daigle, there's Davis, and the other talented, skilled people. Wesley Jacob gets the call today because Brett Besh is not in there at flanker. On the offensive line, Kevin Mawai at left tackle, the man to watch, an all-SEC performer a year ago. On second and nine, Daigle will go up top. It's way overthrown. Intended receiver Wesley Jacob with Calvin Jackson covering him right up the middle of the field. A flag on the play. The defensive line of Auburn has four seniors normally, but Randy Hardis Jr. starting today. He beat out Chucky Johnson for the starting nod this week. Pierce, Willis, and Cunningham are the on the offensive line, line during the play. And they're very experienced in the second penalty, but they're young. The Jackson, a freshman, Schelling and Mound, sophomores, and Fred Smith at the boundary cornerback, a sophomore as well. A holding call will move the ball all the way back inside the LSU 10-yard line and leave them with a second and 18. Early home in his second year with a record of 6-7. and seven. An alumnus of Texas A&M lost to the Aggies a couple weeks ago. Fighting Tigers are in the eye. Second man through Davis runs into his own man. He ran right into his fullback, Odell Beckham, and got out to about the 12, 13 yard line. Willie Whitehead on the stop. Curly Holman, that's not the, the Holman, that's not the way he wants to see it start out. He'd like to get something going on the ground. They've been effective running the football. Pat Dye, proud of his defense. Good job. First time out there against the Bengal Tigers. LSU only 24% on third downs this year. They're 7 of 29. This is a third and 13. Only one man in the backfield. And they will give it on the draw play. Good yardage out to the 23-yard line. Jermaine Williams, who's the backup fullback to Odell Beckham. They call him Juice. A junior out of Donaldsonville, Louisiana. And they'll have to kick. 
A great job by Harold Moore. Watch him. He's coming in here. He's a fifth defensive back. You have to be able to handle the draw if you're going to play with five and six defensive backs. And watch number 12 come. A good stick, good pop. Wrap them up. Put them on the ground. Fourth down. LSU has to punt. Brian DeSells, the punter. A 42 and a half average. Red Smith for Auburn back to receive the wobbly kick. That is 39. Escapes one man. Gets outside. We've got a flag back at the 41 yard line as he breaks midfield and gets down to the 36. A late flag as well. Now you figure that first flag must have been a clip. We'll have to wait and see about the second one. 37 yard kick and 20 of it back on the return. 37 yard kick Bob and not much height on that one. That was kind of a low liner. Smith picked it off. He's kind of the emotional leader on defense. A clip against the return team and a face mask against the defending team. Let's go over! Now these are always tough calls. Kind of creased him along the back. And the uh, flag went down. Now Freddie takes off and going to miss tackle there. And good job of running. Good pursuit by LSU. Drags down the fleet-footed Fred Smith. Looked like Gabe Northern was the man who committed the face mask penalty. I'll talk it over with Stan White, who's about to run his first series. Face mask penalty. Kicking team is declined. Clipping. Receiving team be a 15-yard penalty against the receivers. First down for the receiving team. One penalty assessed and one declined. Okay, now, now look at you folks. You can't see this, but Bob, Bob Carpenter is now looking at the analyst with a with a question in his eyes, like, "What was that?" Let's call Bobby Gadsden. He's our SEC official man, and uh, he can tell us exactly what happened or why you would ever decline that. Maybe they'd have to punt it again if they did. I'm not sure why they did it. They have. Ordinary field position at the 27 yard line as Stan White brings them out. Tony Richardson, the man behind him. They fake into his belly and a little drop up the middle. And that is number 80, Sean Malone. Malone, a redshirt freshman tight end out of Madison, Alabama. Vincent Fuller came up for free safety to get him. White, Smith, and Richardson's the principals in the backfield. Orlando Parker, an exciting performer. He's got seven passes already. Up front, Auburn, Jason Taylor at left guard, and Shannon Robique. They got him out of Denon Strings, Louisiana. They are two redshirt freshmen. So a little bit of youth up front for the Tigers of Auburn. Measurement, they made it on first down. So they move the nose of the football right out to the 37-yard line. Stan White, a 6'3 junior, Barry High School in Birmingham originally. And now he will give it to 21, Alex Smith. He's over the 40, cutting straight up the middle of the field. Smith is in there at tailback because Ted Yarbrough tore a hamstring and is out for three weeks. Miller, Davis, and Mouton on the defensive line. Those three combined for a lot of tackles against Mississippi State. Robel Rowe, Swan. Washington, Desitel, and White or the linebackers. You passed the pronunciation test. Very good. You get an A. And they're all seniors in the defensive backfield. We have wide receivers in there for Auburn. They swing it out to the left side, and Thomas Bailey has it. Bailey broke his jaw. First day of contact, and as Bob Kessling told us, he would be in there. And he caught that pass. Auburn moving the chains again out to the 47-yard line. They keep getting just enough yardage. Bob Kessling, what was the deal on those dual penalties a moment ago? Uh, Tim was exactly right. Auburn would have, uh, or LSU would have had to have punted the ball again if Auburn would have accepted the penalty. Auburn decided it was a short kick, take the penalty and get the ball back, so LSU would have to punt it again. By the way, Thomas Bailey, the wide receiver, is wearing a special face mask and also a special mouthpiece because of that broken jaw. And they really want to 
and nurse him along. Alex Smith, the tailback on the pitch, and that will be negative yardage. Back inside the 45, Daryl McCovery, senior out of Pensacola, very good at strong safety for LSU. On the stop, he was a second teamer on the All SEC team two years ago as a sophomore. And the first game he really started was back in 1990 against Texas A&M, and McCorvey came up with 11 tackles. But just uh, he's there for the bounce out. Carlton Buckles is there. Just good overall team hustle on the part of the Bengal Tigers. Reed McMillan in the backfield. They fake to him and out to the right side. Too tall there. Pass incomplete, intended at the 45-yard line for the flanker Melvin Hines and the other great veteran back there for LSU, Carlton Buckles, the left corner, in to help out. Tommy Bowden, of course, works with the quarters quarterbacks here at Auburn, as does Randy Campbell, and White was going the right way. Good job of coverage by Buckles, and an also a good job by Juan Sendoya, the linebacker who covered the man in the flat. 11-yard run, Pete Schuler and the Volunteers over the Gators early. That is a huge matchup today. After a blocked punt, up over the top, and it's intercepted. Vincent Fuller on a ball that was badly overthrown for Thomas Bailey, and Fuller gets his first interception of the year. He's looking for the tight end down the middle. The tight end wasn't there. This is what they, they're running all their receivers deep. Goes back to the weak side, overthrows the receiver, and Fuller comes up with the uh, interception. First down at the 28 for LSU. Second man. And nothing there for Robert Davis. Damon Primus, who's spelling some men up front. Primus listed as third team left tackle. He's backing up Tim Cromartie today, and he made the stop. And Wayne Hall really likes Primus. He's a junior college transfer, and he's just try trying to get the hang of all his responsibilities. But, but a great individual talent. That rascal right there can run a 4-8-40. He can move. That's not fair for a guy 6'4", 280. And in motion out to the right. Ball is tipped, and it is intercepted by Auburn. Number four with it, Chris Schelling, the strong safety. Calvin Jackson got a piece of it. It hung up in the air, and Schelling pulled it down. Ball going back and forth like crazy so far. 5-13 in, no score, wild one in Auburn. No score here at Auburn. LSU has just given up the football. Auburn Tigers with great field position after this interception. And it's volleyball at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Calvin Jackson, bang, ball hits him in the head. He sets it up for Chris Schilling, who makes the reception. Great field position for Auburn on the first play. They're down inside the 25-yard line. Tony Richardson running the ball. He had only run it five times for 19 yards this year. They're moving into the seventh, second quarter at Tennessee. And the Volunteers, 7-0 after that big play on special teams. Second down and three for Auburn. The deep man has it. Straight ahead, James Bostic, a sophomore out of Dillard High School, Fort Lauderdale. Auburn Tigers have a pipeline from that high school into their program. A whole bunch of people have come from Dillard. And they barrel ahead to move Do the chains. Do it again. Do it again. Great drive on the offensive line. Great job of movement there by Gandy and Taylor. First down at the 16. Fullback has it. Tony Richardson just bouncing off people for a couple of yards inside the 15-yard line. Clock running with 8.45 to go first quarter. Bob Carpenter, Tim Foley, Bob Kessling from Auburn, Alabama. And no scores so far. A game of turnovers so far. Tech on top of Temple, second quarter action. A lot of interesting games in college football today. Oklahoma is out at Southern Cal. Of course, the big Tennessee-Florida game. Florida State is playing a tough one in the ACC against North Carolina State today. 
Second down and eight. They just put a quarterback in a tailback, Bob. Nix, he's the man throwing it, and it's over the top of Stan White. So the two quarterbacks were in there. Nix, a redshirt freshman out of Rainbow City, and that pretty well describes that pass that he was trying to throw back to the starter, Stan White. You know, you got to try it. In the, and I certainly have beat, been beaten by halfback passes in my time when you should have been able to see it coming. But when you put a quarterback in at tailback, I can hear the defensive coaches from LSU shouting up here. So, I mean, it's hard to surprise them that way. Third down and eight. Auburn 14 of 33 this year on third down. 0 for 1 today. And Stan White just falls down at the 18-yard line. And as I mentioned in the open, usually it's the quarterback that gets the too much credit if things go well and too much blame if things don't. And last year, as the offense struggled here at Auburn, uh, Stan White was probably the focus of uh, some of the criticism. But this is a good young quarterback that, uh, that's, that, that is a talented man, and he's got some great coaches. And don't be surprised to see a really good year out of him this year. 35-yarder for Scott Etheridge, a junior. Clay Helton, the holder, Brian Britsfield, the snapper. And he drills it right through for a 3-0 lead. One second past the halfway mark in the first quarter. So Auburn takes the lead, and we'll be back with more after a word from your local station. Home team on top by the field goal, 3-0 Auburn. Brian Karkoska to kick it off. This one's got some distance to it. David Butler, five yards deep, will not run it out. Arakoska, a sophomore out of Tallahassee, who handles the kickoffs. And we'll have another look at the LSU offense against this Auburn multiple 4-3 defense. Only 12 yards and a half dozen plays in the scoring drive. Let's go, yeah, let's go, they had a third and eight, but Stan White fell down. They got the field goal, and now they set up defensively. 7.29 to go, first quarter. Davis all over him 97 Benny Pierce the strong side linebacker Randy Hart the guy who's playing at right tackle and getting the start today helping out big time as well just a great job of setting up for the for the rush playing two gap and then getting to the ball wonderful job by a good Auburn front four here Lost four on the play, second and 14. Wesley Jacob, the man in motion. Fighting Tigers of LSU go straight ahead. They only get a couple of those yards back. Carrickin Cunningham, a six-foot senior, 47, a former North Carolina Tar Heel. Cunningham now coming out of the game. They're going in with their uh, throwing package. Got Sutton in there on the outside to rush the passer. And Insert another defensive back, Harold Morrow. Jesse Dagle, the quarterback, on third and 12. Three receivers in there. Has to double pump up the middle. Intended for Wesley Jacob and off his hands. Problem was, had he caught it, he still would have been short of the first down. And the Auburn crowd is into it. Not quite a sellout here today, but they're making a lot of noise as their defense keeps coming strong. Good read that time by Daigle, who had thrown the ball inappropriately on the last uh, on his last opportunity. But that time, a good read. He got the ball to the right man. Just didn't hold on. Ryan DeSells after a 37-yarder. He'll be inside his own 10 when he lets this one go. Had a lot of time, and he puts it end over end. Fred Smith at his 42. He escapes over midfield, down to the 42 of LSU. Rodney Young brought him down. This guy keeps making something out of nothing on those punt returns. So good field position for Auburn again. 6.04 first quarter. They already lead by three with a chance for more. This is turning into a first quarter of field position here in Auburn, Alabama. They had the field goal. They have a good punt return to get good field position back. And Fred Smith, pretty dangerous, number six. Makes a good move, takes it right up the middle. Auburn working hard because this guy will make something happen. He's got a lot of courage and uh, came on last year as a 
freshman and made a, a lot of freshman All-American teams. So he's a tough guy. Let's settle up real quickly with Bob Kessling. And so close to the line of scrimmage of the huddle. Basically, just trying to get in and out quicker. They don't want to wear their linemen out on a tough day like this. Also, guys, look for them to switch their linemen up front. They're going to move people at center and guard, trying to keep them fresh. First down at the 42. Alex Smith, good yardage. He'll get about nine on first down as he angles toward the far hash mark. Alex Smith out of College Park, Georgia, Atlanta suburb. He rushed for 2,100 yards there his last two years, and he's wrapping up a fine career at Auburn. Redmond's in there now, 65. Thompson, 54, 66. Jason Taylor. Look at Freddie Baxter downfield, working hard. These Auburn Tigers know that the, a season might be on the line early for them here. Second and one. And they'll go with the sure thing. 41, Reed McMillan. A six-foot junior. And straight ahead for the first down as LSU will huddle up again. There's Fred Baxter, the starting tight end. Preseason All-SEC pick this year by the media. And he's got a uh, rib problem, Bob, and he was questionable for today, so he's he's not real nifty out there right now. I saw Sean Malone check in. Another tight end. We'll give it to the fullback. And James Boston. The time they went with a two tight end set. One back in the backfield. We saw Jason Taylor getting up from the pile there, the redshirt freshman out of Mobile. Number 66 in the offensive line. There will be some serious battles in the trenches today. And Tim, you expected this to be a, a real hard-nosed, hard-fought football game today. Yes, I yes I did. Not after this play, I'll tell you why. Nothing fancy, just straight ahead stuff. And here's second and eight coming up. Tigers in the eye. Boston. And the Tigers of LSU, a nice job of stopping him. Very good game taking place in the ACC today. Florida State, one of the top teams in the nation. They're playing at NC State. And the 16th ranked Wolfpack of Dick Sheridan, an early field goal. And they're into the second quarter with that 3 0 lead. In the offseason, Pat Dye uh, changed strength conditioning coaches, and he brought in a guy named Steve Maples, who we had a relationship with over a lot of years. And I'll tell you about Steve Maples, Maples in just a second. Third down and six for Auburn. Bailey. Good job by Bailey there. Ball thrown on the money by White. The geese in good position, stumbled a little bit coming back. You have to respect Bailey's speed. This guy can fly. He holds some NCAA track records. Last year he had kick return yards for over a thousand, set an SEC record. And so it's a it's a bundle out there for Gary Pegues to handle, who is spelling Carlton Buckles at this time. First and 10 at the 15. Captain Fancy straight ahead, James Bostic again. A very deliberate, well-conceived drive by the Auburn Tigers. Bostic is a starter at fullback, played tailback in high school, probably the, the most versatile back that Auburn has. Because of injuries to Ted Yarborough, he had a hand, hamstring injury, he forced into service as a tailback, and uh, Pat Dow is very confident about what this young man out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale could do. He's averaging about three yards a carry. Richardson, Bostic, and Joe Frazier, the running backs in there. A little wishbone look, and they get inside the five-yard line. When Auburn says multiple, they mean it. Their base offense, the multiple eye, but they'll split the backs and run a wishbone on short yardage. And they will move the chains to make it first and goal. Well, we were talking about uh, Steve Maples. Now, Steve Maples is an old-fashioned, old-time, Pat Dye philosophy type person. Pat Dye, given a choice, would shove the ball down your throat as opposed to throwing it. And uh, they have gone back in their off-seasoning conditions conditioning program just the old-fashioned hardball Tony Richardson straight ahead 
on first and goal from the three. In their preseason program, uh, Bob, they had a guy that couldn't, they run 12 220s after practice, and uh, somebody said they couldn't run them. They had a pulled groin, so Steve Maples <laughs> went out and bought a wheelchair. <laughs> brought the wheelchair back in that afternoon and says, look, if you can't run them, you're going to roll them. And the guy said, no, I can't get in that wheelchair. It's going to jinx me. I'll get hurt. He said, you're going to run them or roll them. And uh, the player decided he'd run them. So there are no exceptions with Steve Maple. Richardson, Bostick, and Frazier, the backs. Bostick, diving, touchdown, Auburn. James Bostick with his first touchdown of the year. Nine-nothing Auburn Tigers with a minute 49 to go in the first quarter. They're working on that right side over there. Chris Gray, the right tackle, gets some movement. Robini and Bostic over the top. Close but good. Etheridge 10 for 10, make it a perfect 11 now. And with a minute 49 to go in the first quarter, Auburn Tigers over the LSU Fighting Tigers, 10-0. They're replacing Tillman and Meeks and Blake in there. They've got some good players that aren't there this year. And there's James Bostic. I like tailback. Let me play tailback, Pat. I like it there. Yes, sir. Right nothing, on. Nothing like that first collegiate touchdown. Bostic ran the ball for 60 yards last year. And his first score. 10-0 Auburn. And now it's up to LSU to get something going offensively. Jesse Daigle hasn't been able to do much at quarterback. We could see Chad Loop in a little bit. Bob Kessling, why the empty seats at uh, Jordan-Hare Stadium today? Well, one of the reasons is the students are, aren't on campus. In fact, they're on the quarter session here in Auburn. They play four games before the, the students even arrive. So they have 15,000 seats set aside for the students. And as you can see, they probably picked up about half of them. They can't sell them because they got to keep them free for the students. So they don't pick them up. They pretty much go unused, and that's the case today. But everything else, all the other seats pretty much filled up today. Markoska kicking off for Auburn. He line drives one down into the end zone. David Butler will run it out. He'll angle to his left, and he will get back to the 21-yard line before the Tigers of Auburn take him down. Mark Johnson, a free safety on special teams with the initial hit. David Butler came in averaging 30 yards per kickoff return, and already this season has ripped off a 59-yarder. That time he had it on the short side, it certainly is a lot easier to see up here. But just like Smith did with the punt returns, get it upfield. Jesse Daigle still the quarterback. Makes to Davis, right side to the big tight end, Harold Bishop. And forget that, Chris Schelling right there to meet him. Bit of a mismatch, Bishop 6'6", 250, Schelling 5'10", 177. Played free safety the last couple of games of the season in 91. They moved him over to strong safety. Moved Mounds, who was a running back, to free safety, but just played this very well. Laid off it, helped on the flanker, then reacted to the tight end. He cap roped him right down. Second down and nine. They go with the drop. Somehow the ball is caught by Butler. Oh. And he oh. slides out to the 26-yard line. Almost a disastrous play for LSU as Curly, did you feel the bullet going by that time? Yep. Where do you see this? Auburn was really in there. Watch number game. 51, James Willis. He reads it. He's coming. He's going to make the play. Daigle just lifts it right over his head. Butler makes the catch, and they get a few, few yards out of it. But that could have been six going the other way. Nice throw by Daigle. Good read by Willis. Almost made a big play. Crowd roaring. Third down and five. Dago has his pass knocked down. It looked like number 93, Raymond Luster, a redshirt freshman out of Ensley High School, Birmingham. There's big 93, 6'3", 272, and the Auburn defense stays very tough. 
Th that is, this is exactly where you don't want Jesse Daigle, in the pocket back there. LSU doesn't want him in that pocket. They want to move him out a little bit because he is only 5'10", and he's going to have a problem throwing it out of that well. Thomas Bailey is back to get the kick. No fair catch for him. Caught the ball at about the 42-yard line. He'll just get a yard or two, but again, in this first quarter of field position that only has 11 seconds remaining, Auburn has really had great position. And, and the punting game is hurting the Tigers. You know, there's not a lot of distance on those punts, and there is no height on those punts. So, I mean, that's been a something that I'm sure that Holman will have a conversation with the punter, but there's really not much you can do. You go with the best you have and hope for the best. 11 seconds to go, first quarter. Auburn in the eye. To the fullback, Reed McMillan. Fighting Tigers will wrestle him down. They'll mark his forward progress at the 46. First quarter will end on this play. Watch walk up steps in there. Anthony Williams. Juan Zendaya. So after the first quarter of play here at Auburn, the Tigers, the home team, on top. SEC football, Jefferson Pilot Sports, second quarter getting underway here in Auburn, Alabama. Bob Carpenter, Tim Foley, Bob Kessling, and it's all Auburn Tigers so far. They've quadrupled LSU's rushing yardage, more than that passing. And they'll go second down and eight at the 46. Alex Smith, LSU, good job of stopping him there. Looks like the Tigers are starting to get their rhythm up front a little better. That was William Crowell out of Meridian, Mississippi, an inside linebacker who was all SEC freshman last year. And it's a good team on defense. They've got a lot of young people playing, and you're going to see a lot of different people up front as the defense coordinator, Mike Bugar, likes to work a lot of folks in, keep a lot of people involved in the action. Rovell Rowe, Swan was the man who jumped over and got back. Stan White will improvise. And they will mark him down inside the 45-yard line, moving the chains. Ray Adams from right corner. Good job of coverage by the LSU secondary. Their man underneath, too deep. And in a system like that, nobody really has responsibility for the quarterback once he flushes you got to react, but it's tough to do when you're running man-to-man -to, -man to get your head around and look for the quarterback. Good job by White, first down. Early Holman's team spending entirely too much time on defense here in the first half. Bostic, the fullback, who can also play tailback. They must be going crazy. 14-0 as they go to the second quarter of play. James Stewart, a little man with a touchdown run in Tennessee with 95 plus thousand going crazy, leading Florida by two touchdowns. What a test for Shane Matthews and company now up in Knoxville. Thing is, they can make up points in a hurry. That's very true. Second and seven. Coming with the corner blitz, Bob. And a quick look outside, Thomas Bailey. Well, you really have to just hold on when you get him. Vincent Fuller wrapping him around the ankles and then hoping for some support to get the tackle. Another good read by Stan White. You see the cornerback has slid inside. White checks off. That's just an automatic, and Fuller hangs on. Last year, he was a starting tailback for the Tigers, and just a great athlete with a wonderful attitude. He moves over on defense and hung on to Thomas Bailey, because if Bailey had broken that one, there was nobody else. He's gone. Three running backs on third and two. Frazier joining Bostic and Richardson. And it is Joe Frazier. Frazier, a sophomore out of Montgomery. And it looks like a fourth and one for Auburn. And you know what the home crowd wants. Scott Etheridge, their kicker, has not kicked a field goal this year from beyond 40 yards. In fact, hasn't attempted one. So with 
The Tigers being out of range at the moment, they'll stack up the backfield with those three again and go for it on fourth and one. You like to see this as a player. You like to take chances like this. Couple of tight ends. Bostick is through for the first down. Bostick having a heck of a lot of fun out there as a sophomore getting lots of playing time. Good movement by Wayne Gandy. Frazier leading him up inside and Bostick, Bostick makes the necessary yardage. I'm just, as a player, you, you like to go turn loose like that. Take some chances. In the, it's like Dave Shula's that's Cincinnati the, Bengals went for it a couple times on fourth down. That's why they're 2-0. That's why the Tigers are very tired defensively. No first downs by their offense. Bostick again. You saw Corey White come flying in there to turn the play inside. And that gave the strong safety, Daryl McCorvey, a chance to come up and make the play. Ravel Swan. Definitely on the all-SEC name team. They like to call him Swanee. And he really has not played up to his potential yet. He's been limited by injuries to his knee and to his ankle, but uh, the coaches at LSU say he's healthy for the first time in his career in Baton Rouge. Looks like Auburn will have to spend a time out here. 11.05 to go in the first half. Had trouble getting organized on a second and 10 at the line of scrimmage, but they lead 10-0. Well, it is not the Auburn War Eagles, it's the Auburn Tigers, but War Eagle 6, their Golden Eagle mascot, his name is Tiger. That's War the... Eagle, more of a battle cry here than anything else. Second down and 10 at the 31. Hitch and go. White up over the top and in the corner. Thomas Bailey just couldn't get there. Vince Fuller, pretty good coverage. You had the feeling, Tim, they were running their 10th play of the drive. It's been a very conservative drive and had a feeling that Bailey might sneak in there for something. But conservative success is good. Don't, oh, let, yeah. don't, don't let that bother you. But Tommy Bowden, uh, he, he likes to put the ball in the air. That time, he felt like he had a good shot. Fuller out there. Once again, they blitzed the corner. Fuller's man-to-man. -man. He had it. Just threw it a little deep. White, four of seven, 29 yards. One picked off. He's in the shotgun on third and 10. Nobody open. Great coverage by the Tigers. He goes out to the right side. And Joe Frazier again. Not much yardage there. That's what you might call a coverage, almost a coverage sack, but good coverage by LSU. See, LSU is going to drop eight more than any other team in the SEC. They got a lot of coverage back there, and they're trying to force him to make this throw. He dumps it off to Frazier, come up and make the tackle. Good job by Swan. They force a, uh, a field goal. Scott Etheridge with his longest attempt of the year. It'll be a 47-yarder from the near hash mark. And he hooks it. A low wobbly kick. Not even close on that one. So LSU will hold. And their defense will get a well-deserved breather. 10.09 before halftime. Auburn leads by 10. Lots to cheer about for our Auburn fans so far. LSU now will have their third quarterback, Ryan Huffman, in there. Former All-American at Clear Lake High School, Houston. A freshman, 6'2", 210. First and 10 at the 30-yard line will give it to David Butler. Oh, oh, oh. And the ball is on the ground out at the 40-yard line. LSU indicates they have it. Frank Godfrey comes up with the ball. Their center. <laughs> that's, that's all LSU would need at this point. You know, they make a change at quarterback, make a change at tailback. Just a great job by James Willis. It looked like he pulled it out there. He's a big play man in the center of this Auburn defense. <laughs> nine-yard gain Jacob the man in motion and they give it to Odell Beckham haven't heard much yet from the 510 senior Beck, who's run the ball for 51 yards and 11 carries coming in Shane Matthews with 250 to go second quarter has hit Willie Jackson with an 11 yarder and the Gators with that quick strike capability are right back in it 
Well, Tennessee's got some momentum. Great win for them last week. And the pitch on the option. Escaping is Butler momentarily. And then Auburn catches up with him out around midfield. Jermaine Williams, the backup to Odell Beckham at fullback for LSU. Bob Kessling, what's the story? Yeah, in LSU's last possession, he binged up his shoulder a little bit. They took his shoulder pads off, and they worked it. They put another pad on the shoulder. He's standing on the sidelines. Might be able to come back, they hope, but the shoulder is awfully sore right now. He's just trying to get some feeling back into it. Doesn't hurt to have two fullbacks on a day like today. Second down and seven right at the midfield stripe. LSU needs a drive here. On the run, Huffman out to the left side. Ball pulled down by Scott Ray. His fourth reception of the year. He backs up Shedrick Wilson at split end. Huffman rolling out to the left. A two-man pattern out there. He picks Scott Ray on the outside that's hanging right along the sideline. He gets up in the air, gets both feet down. Good job by the junior from Baton Rouge. His career stats. And on first down, David Butler, ball was knocked straight down with the ball carrier as Alonzo Etheridge came up big right at the line of scrimmage. This is getting to be a tense drive. But I'll be surprised if they leave David Butler in the football game. Dropped it two consecutive times. Yeah, that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit too often. George Hafter is the offensive coordinator here at Ellis. You good hit, but you know, I mean, you're going to get hit. And, uh, you know, he just can't have his tailback laying a ball on the ground. Second down and nine. Auburn Tigers are coming, and they've got the quarterback in the backfield. Alonzo Etheridge in there again. Guy on the other side, Jason Merchant coming from the left side. Primary rule when you have the ball, don't stand still. <laughs> There's, but he really didn't have many choices. Brian, that's okay. We'll tell your mother you're all right, man. Took a lick that time. Dangerous. Third down and 11. LSU eating up two and a half minutes. They've got a long way to go, though. They trail by 10, 7 10, first half to go. Coming with five. Huffman waiting patiently. He's got his tight end, Harold Bishop, and he's down to the 30 yard line, and that will be an LSU first down. By far their biggest offensive play of the day. Harold Bishop was hurt last year in the second game. After that, the tight ends did not catch a pass for LSU. That time he blocked and just kind of snuck out. And there you see George Hafner with his leg on the board there calling the plays. Next to him, Daryl Dickey, Inez's oldest son. First down at the 30. Davis cutting up. And he'll get about five as he makes something out of not much. Tim Cromarty got in from left tackle. Robert Davis, a three-time All-Stater at Homewood High School in Birmingham, and his coaches might be building that offense around him in the years to come. Of course, George uh, Hafner on the right, uh, out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago, Illinois. George was 11 year, 11 years the offensive coordinator to George, just very experienced at developing significant offensive attacks. Second and five. Huffman will keep it, gets away from one man. He's trapped on the sideline. And he does well to get down to about the 22-yard line. Had to run a lot to get a gain of three. First time all day, Curly Holman's been able to talk much to his quarterback on a drive. Usually it's been three plays, kick, and come on back. Third down and two coming up. Clock runs under six minutes to go, first half. It's the freshman quarterback leading LSU on its first good drive of the day. Jacob comes out near side with Scott Ray. He 
you will roll that way and throw on the run and it's pulled down by Wesley Jacob down around the 15 yard line. We show you two, res two receivers at the bottom of your screen. Just run a little combination route here. Jacobs turns it out. Scott trying to wall off Chris Schilling as he comes out to finally knock Jacob out of bounds. Huffman at quarterback, three for three, 28 yards. He's got his ball club down to the 15-yard line. Pitch to Davis, cuts it up, inside the 10. He almost got outside for the touchdown, but Otis Mounds came up from free safety to wrestle him down. Good job of blocking by Harold Bishop. This play is not designed to go outside. It's designed to come up inside. We've seen this a lot at Georgia. This George Hafner loves this play, and he's got a guy that can run it, and he's got a, some people that can block. The Simnick up front and, and centers on the right side. It'll be a second and one. Straight ahead to the goal line. Ball is fumbled, but it was a touchdown first. Robert Toomer on the carry. Toomer, a freshman fullback. And he evidently got the ball to the goal line before it squirted out. LSU might have been fortunate on that play. Of course, we don't have the best angle in the world, and we're a long way from the, from the action, but it looked like the ball came out early. And you're not going to be able to tell from this angle. Toomer stretches to the end zone, and the ball pops out. And, uh, those guys are on it down there. I'm sure they made the right call. Matt Herkent with the extra point. He's the man who's playing because of the suspension of Pedro Suarez. Herkamp, first PAT of the year, and the Bayou Bengals are right back in it. 10-7 now. Auburn's lead has been shaved to a field goal. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast, a copyrighted presentation, any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the SEC and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Bob Carpenter, Tim Foley upstairs, Bob Kessling down on the field on a hot, muggy Saturday afternoon. And LSU got just what it needed. Three passes, nine rushes, a 70-yard drive that took 12 plays in five minutes and 21 seconds. And they had the luck of the Irish for offensive coordinator George Hampton. They laid the ball on the ground three times in that drive, and you're lucky to come away with it if you do. Otis Mounds, the return man. LSU, good job of coverage. First man downfield was Lee Williams. Gary Pegues was down there as well. He's a big play man for them on special teams. There's the kicker. And now the LSU defense will get back out there. Four forty two to go before the first half. Probably the biggest difference between high school football and college football if you're carrying the ball is the velocity with which you get hit. You just don't have people tearing at you and smacking you around like that in high school often. White, a little misdirection back there. Alex Smith, the ball carrier. He got about three yards out there on left end before Ricardo Washington, the inside linebacker, came to get him. Pat Washington out of Bogalusa. Pat Dye said the only difference in this game between these two teams is one has won a big game and one hasn't yet. And, uh, and he feels like a lot of questions will be answered about his Auburn team uh, this Saturday afternoon. Second down and five. Draw play. And out to about the 25-yard line. Alex Smith again. So the clock continues to run with 35 seconds to go. Tennessee with a late field goal in the second quarter and a 10-point lead over Florida up in Knoxville. Gators ranked fourth, Volunteers 14th. Auburn will go to work on third down. They're two out of six today. They face a third and four. 
with three wide receivers. They give it to the only running back, and Alex Smith slashes up the left side for the first down. Good read by, by Alex Smith. Senior. A real journeyman here for uh, at Auburn. Played on and off over the years. A great read there. Robert Des Hotel trying to scrape to the outside to make the play, but he just couldn't catch up with the fleet footed Alex Smith. You saw the 100 on their jerseys there. Football starting at Auburn in 1892. LSU will celebrate its 100th anniversary next year. First down in a deep drop by White. He flings it out to the right side. The 50-yard line, it's pulled down by Melvin Hines. He doesn't catch many, but he goes for long yardage, 19 there, 25 against Ole Miss's previous catch. Let's watch him working on Buckles. He takes it to the inside, gets Buckles turned inside, breaks it back. Now, Carlton's got to adjust a lot quicker than that. White puts it on the money, and Hines, a, a former walk-on who just got a scholarship last season, got his first start last week against Samford. He can fly. Two catches, 44 yards. Stan White starting to warm things up a bit. Auburn Tigers out to midfield with just over three minutes to go. And Alex Smith is the workhorse of this drive. Just a couple. Right back to action we are next week. Gamecocks of South Carolina is still smarting from that Arkansas game. Kentucky lost, of course, at Florida last week. Kentucky's playing that bourbon barrel game against Indiana today, and South Carolina hosting those Pirates of East Carolina. That's our matchup next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. SEC football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. As Pat Dye looks on. Second down and eight. Little play action, and then he flings it out to the left side for Thomas Bailey. He's got first down yardage down to the 39. Broken jaw and all. We're seeing how dangerous he is. They get it to Bailey in the slot. They're man to man on the outside. You see Hines come down to block McCorvey. That ball was almost thrown backwards. Bailey makes a nice catch. Look at Ricardo Washington. Great hustle getting over there to help on the tackle by Ray Adams. Now another first down, down to the 39. And a crossing pattern. Thomas Bailey got hung out to dry a bit by his quarterback there as Stan White delivered it just a little high, but in his field of vision, he's got a lot of big defensive linemen. He may have to throw it there to get it over the top. And he's had a problem with that in the past. That's one thing that uh, a team will prepare for when they're playing against Stan White. He has had a tendency in the past to throw it a little sidearm, and he has had more balls tipped than the that would that would be the normal ratio for a quarterback. And Bowden spent a lot of time working with him in the offseason on that. Joe Frazier straight ahead. David Walker from inside linebacker with the stop. Frazier, a man we didn't expect to see much, but they have some injuries in their backfield with Ted Yarborough tearing his hamstring in practice on Tuesday. He'll be out three weeks. Frank Sanders, their wide receiver who normally starts, a back injury, a herniated disc. And there's our first overheat of the day as Carrickin Cunningham heads for the cool locker room. Quarterback draw down to the 31-yard line. Ruvelro Swan on the stop. Good reaction. It worked for Auburn earlier in the game. It wasn't actually a draw. It was a scramble, but they got LSU in man-to-man -man coverage underneath. This time, Bowden trying to hit that same button calls the draw. Good reaction by LSU's defense. Tim, it looks like they might go here on fourth and three. Based on that last kick by Scott Etheridge, it was not a good one. Or they'll call a timeout and talk about it. Play clock is down to 10. They're going to let it run down some more, then call the timeout. They've got two left. Two, one. Now they call it just as the play clock passes the one second mark. Good idea. Trying to run as much time off the clock 
as they can before if, they make their decision. And if they don't make it, they leave LSU very little time to get down the field. Exactly. You hate to plan for failure, but it's not a bad... <laughs> I think it's a good idea. <laughs> not a bad thing to fall back on. Well, Bob Kessling will have a lot coming up for us at halftime. His usual assortment of things from down on the field. There you see Curly Hallman, and boy, he's been a, uh, was an assistant coach for 17 years, and he worked for, and played for Gene Stallings, and uh, worked for Bear Bryant, Danny Ford, Richard Williamson, Jackie Sherrill. And then he got a shot at being a head coach himself at Southern Miss. The Pat Dye years here at Auburn, his 12th year here, and since Pat Dye came to the school, Auburn has more SEC titles than anybody else in the league. Tennessee has three. Bama, Georgia, LSU, two each. Act Dye yeah. has four. Exactly, and he's actually got more in his first 10 years of coaching than any other coach in SEC history. So a lot of success here at Auburn in the last decade. A lot of turmoil here at Auburn in the last year. And uh, they're trying to get all that off the field activity behind them and concentrate on what goes on in, in the stadium. Richardson, the only man in the backfield. Orlando Parker is the motion man on fourth and three. A pitch. Richardson trying to get around the corner. Did he make it? It'll be very close. Curly Hallman is trying to help the officials with the sideline spot. This will be a very important measurement if he did not surpass the marker, and he has the first down trying to get LSU's offense adjusting to the wide side of the field. There's a toss. Good hustle by LSU to get there. That's walk up, making a hit, and uh, just not in time. Tony Richardson picks up a critical first down, and Auburn still now, they're in, they're in scoring territory with four downs to go. They're perfect on fourth down today. Twice they've gone for it. They've made it twice. Time across the middle, and that's the tight end, Fred Baxter. Down inside the 15-yard line. We showed you those two in our opening today. This is Stan White's favorite target. This is David and Goliath here. Baxter, 6'4", 248. LSU coming with a blitz. Baxter slipped inside of Vince Fuller. Vince couldn't get his hand on the ball. Good job of helping out there. And then a quick out to the right sideline for Orlando Parker. Double coverage out there by the Tigers with Vince Fuller and Carlton Buckles. And the clock stops with 23 seconds before halftime. Good job by Buckles of coming off and helping on that. Well, you got Parker out there. You better have some help. You bet. And he helped on, he, he made the tackle on Baxter. He came off his man. And, went inside to help Pat Dye wanting to make sure they're on the same page down here in, in this area second down and 10 Thomas Bailey split out to the near side you can't see him but he's out wide they look to the short man and that is Orlando Parker pretty nifty grab down around the 10 yard line a very difficult catch on a very quick pattern and the clock stopped momentarily with 14 seconds to go and Auburn will talk it over. They'll use their third timeout. I've never seen a screen called in the 11 years I've been doing this. I've never seen a screen called where the offensive guy comes up and screens a defensive man that cover, that's covering somebody else. But that, and that's what Auburn was running there. And the reason it's against the rules, but it never gets called, so you run it. You know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> you try to accidentally get in the way of any defender you can and free somebody up. And there's Stan White. What a, he had a great game against Ole Miss. Uh, 394 yards passing the ball. I mean, that's, that's something. Equal opportunity quarterback. He's used six different receivers today. He's gone over 200 yards 12 times in his career. Over 300 yards three times. And they had a change of offense. Well, not offensive coordinators because they really didn't designate one before but he had a coach Pat Sullivan who's now the head coach at TCU and and uh, they brought in Tommy Bowden and and, and it's going to affect you a little bit as, as a young man adjusts to a different style in stands uh, had a great redshirt freshman year had a difficult time last year got knocked around a lot and 
now he's hope, hoping back. LSU coming hard. And this one up over the top on third and seven. The blitz was on. Vince Fuller came from free safety around to pressure Stan White into a quick throw. And now with eight seconds left, the Tigers will try to make it a 13-7 halftime lead. There were, there were a lot of collisions on that play. While the ball was in the air, and, uh, and the official wisely chose just to let it go. It wasn't interference, and the ball was uncatchable. 27-yard attempt from the near hash mark. Bridge one for two today. Steps that one through nicely. And with three seconds to go before halftime, Auburn has a six-point lead. So a good clock-eating drive by the Auburn Tigers. They couldn't get the touchdown. But you've got to get something out of that drive, especially with LSU coming back to score last time. So this one very much a ball game, no matter what happens here in the final three seconds. Auburn came close to running the Tigers out early on. They had things going their way. LSU admitted, admittedly is, has, was fortunate on their drive as they laid the ball on the ground and recovered it themselves. I mean, whenever you could recover three fumbles. Let's look at that last play, the third down play on the, on the wide angle. Watch at the bottom of your screen. Good jam here. They're trying to get Baxter up the sideline. Boom, he gets jammed again. Ball in the air. There's just no room. And uh, good job of defense by LSU. Thwarts uh, an Auburn touchdown, but they get a field goal out of it. And they'll look for coverage here. Three seconds to go as they kick it off and a six-point lead. Gary Pegues and David Butler, the LSU Fighting Tigers, back inside their own five-yard line. They'll scoop it on the ground and force LSU to pick it up. Odell Beckham, the fullback, picking it up. He's out to the 40-yard line, and we're out to halftime here in Auburn, Alabama. Couple of field goals by Etheridge. A Bostic one-yard touchdown run, a Toomer touchdown run for LSU, and it's 13 to seven at the half. Auburn Tigers on top of LSU. Let's go down to the field for a quickie at halftime. Here's Bob Kessler. Coach, what are your thoughts in the first half? Well, you know, I, we missed a lot of opportunities to be, you know, score more points than we we've got. Uh, I thought defensively we played very well, except the first first the drive there right before the half, and. Uh, you know, I think as anybody's ball game right now, uh, I just want our kids to keep playing hard. I, I'm sure they've we've played a lot of people. They've played a lot of people, so we ought to have a heck of a second half. Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Pat Dye, the coach of the Auburn Tigers, his team leading here at halftime, 13 to 7 over LSU, and we'll continue from Jordan Hare Stadium at halftime in just a moment. The Auburn Band performs in the front of the sunbaked crowd here at Jordan Harris Stadium. The Auburn Tigers leading the LSU Tigers by a score of 13 to 7. Plenty of things going on at Auburn. They are celebrating their 100th year of collegiate football. And one of their best tight ends they've ever had is a gentleman by the name of Fred Baxter. Had one catch in the first half, but he remains one of the potent threats in this Auburn attack. Baxter's an opposing threat at 6'4 and 240 from his tight end position, but he's also an excellent blocker, perhaps the best on this Auburn team. Fred has done a great job for us as far as a blocking tight end and a, and a receiving tight end. He's, you know, I call him more reliable because he's always, he always can find it, find a way to get open and he always makes a catch. And he's got, you know, great hands and, and he's just got that knack for getting open and he's just a great football player. Baxter emerged as a star last year. He started in all 11 Auburn games, and he averaged 14 yards per reception. He was the Tigers' big passing threat as he had 28 catches on the season and usually punished people when he caught the football. You know what I'm saying? I love getting the ball. And, you know, whatever it takes for me to win, you know what I'm saying? If they have to throw me the ball, it's good. But now that the guys are stepping forth and wanting the ball more, you know what I'm saying, it, it opened the game up for them to be killing me so they be killing everybody. Baxter is also versatile in football and baseball for the Auburn teams. Fred is, Fred is, a, is a total leader off and on the field, and he's, you know, does everything he can for the football team, and then, you know, when he's not doing it for the football team, he's doing it for the baseball team. <laughs> Baxter brings back memories of another Auburn two-sport star, Bo Jackson. 
He's now a major league prospect in baseball, but his big concern now is getting Auburn back on the beam and Stan White in the right direction. It's great. You know what I'm saying? You know, like last year, talking about it, you know what I'm saying? He, he struggled a little bit. Everybody knew it. The fans knew it. I knew it. He knew it. So he came back this year. He's working hard. You know, he knew what mistakes he made last year, and he corrected them, and, he, and he's working hard now to, you know, be the best player he can be. Fred Baxter, the all-SEC tight end, making his part in Auburn Tiger football history. Baxter slowed today by some sore ribs and a groin pull, but he should be a factor in the second half. We're at halftime. Auburn leading 13 to 7. We'll check the scores from around the country. First, a word from your local station. Jared Harris Stadium, one of the more colorful ones in the Southeastern Conference, almost sold out today on a hot day in Alabama as the Tigers are leading the LSU Tigers 13 to 7. This is a very big game for both of these teams as the winner will stay very much in the fight for the SEC Western Division Championship. Today here, they're also saluting some of the past championship teams in Auburn history. But now it's time for the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Stability is one of our benefits. There is a huge SEC game going on at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville right now. They're at halftime, and the Tennessee Volunteers are knocking off the Florida Gators 17-7. Tennessee looking for their second straight major upset. Georgia trying to bounce back after losing to Tennessee last week is leading Cal State Fullerton at ha in the second quarter now, 7 to nothing. Another big game, third-ranked Florida State leading NC State. That's at halftime, 14 to 3 in a big ACC matchup. Other scores around the country. Michigan in a non-conference game is leading Oklahoma State in Ann Arbor, 14 to nothing. That's in the second quarter. Oklahoma leads Southern Cal, 3 0. That game's at halftime. And in the second quarter, Virginia Tech and Temple are tied at 7 7. And of course, we will keep you updated on scores throughout the course of this afternoon. Here in Auburn, the Auburn Tigers lead LSU at halftime, 13 to 7. Bob Carpenter, Tim Foley have second half action when we come back in just a moment. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC football is brought to you by Lowe's, helping add value to your home. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for a Nationwide agent nearest you. Welcome back to Jordan Air Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. At halftime, the Auburn Tigers over the LSU Fighting Tigers by a score of 13 to 7. Bob Carpenter back with Tim Foley. You expected a uh, tough, hard-fought game, something that we didn't wouldn't see a lot of explosive plays. How about it so far? Well, I think we've seen some explosive plays. I think that LSU is fortunate at this point in time to be in the game. They were kind of, uh, offensively, they had some difficulty finding the track. Uh, they finally found it halfway through the second quarter and really developed, drove the ball 70 yards uh, and then only had 89 yards total offense in the first half. They got one, most of it on one drive. Defense has kept them in the football game, but Auburn has really controlled the game. The score is not indicative of what happened in the first half. And LSU very much in it, despite the fact they went a long time today without having a first down. And then it took their basic third quarterback to come in and, and engineer the scoring drive. And they're used to that. They, they've got three quarterbacks that uh, Curley says he's going to play, so it's not something unusual. Well, let's talk about that LSU standpoint. Here's Bob Kessling with the head coach. Coach, give us your thoughts on the first half, and what do you got to do in the second half to win? Well, starting off, field position killed us. We didn't move the football first three times. Auburn dominated the field position. They got four inside of it. Uh, we, we had a little burst at the end. We had a good drive with Huffman in there, made some things happen. And we've got to control the field position. This first five minutes of the second half is going to be very important. They're going to receive, and we got to set a tempo. But we can't let, let them have the ball at midfield all day. And it's going to be an exciting fourth quarter. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Curly Holman of the LSU Tigers. Is Tigers trailing, though, as they begin play here in the third quarter? All right, Bob, thank you very much. And let's have a look at the scoring summary for today. Scott Etheridge got things started with a 35-yard field goal, 7.29 to go first quarter. Auburn led 3-0. They made it 10-0 on a Bostic one-yard run as James went in with a minute 49 to go. And this one capped a nine-play, 42-yard, four-minute and 15-second drive, 10-0 after the first quarter. LSU finally got on the board after a long drive of its own. Almost five minutes, they had the football, and it was Toomer, Robert Toomer, a freshman fullback, 
And did he have it when he hit the end zone, or had he fumbled the ball ahead of time? Hard to tell. They gave him the TD with 4.48 to go, and it became a 10-7 game. And then Auburn on a drive of nearly five minutes, capping with a Scott Etheridge field goal from 27 yards. Three seconds to go before halftime, and that made it 13-7 after 30 minutes of play. LSU waited a long time to get any first downs today. Auburn, the edge in rushing yards. They've more than doubled up on passing and almost doubling up on total offense. Time of possession was a lot wider of a disparity in the first quarter than it turned out to be at the half, and both turnovers came on interceptions in the early stages of the game. In special teams has been a strong part of LSU's game, and uh, you know Curley has had a lot to do with special teams wherever he's been as an assistant and concentrates on it as a head coach. And special teams hurt him in the first half. He talked about field position when he came out from halftime. And a lot of that had to do with uh, punts that didn't go very far and they didn't go very high. And so they've got to turn that special teams factor around for them in the second half. Early Holman has a home date coming up next week with Colorado State. Then Tennessee comes in before they go to Florida. He, he needs these next two. Meanwhile, Auburn will host Southern Miss and Vanderbilt before they go to Mississippi State and Florida, taking them into the middle of October. Matt Herkamp, the backup place kicker for LSU. Otis Mounds is the deep man back there. Along with Joe Frazier. It's Frazier at the 11-yard line for Auburn. Gets outside, tripped up momentarily. It takes the kicker to help out. He still escapes, but he's out of bounds. Back at about the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. Joe Frazier is quite a story. A, a nose guard in high school. Nobody really recruited him, obviously. He wasn't big enough to play nose. Came here to Auburn. Ended up starting last year as a tailback. Great job of balance. Wrap him up. Let's see where he goes out of bounds. Could not. Maybe he didn't. You want to show that? Well, we'll get it back to you in a minute. Didn't appear as though he went out. On the first carry, Alex Smith escaping. And he's out near the 50-yard line. Another look at that kickoff return. Swatch, that foot's in, left foot's in. That's hard to tell on that one. That might have been the step. Bobby Williams is in the way. It's hard to see. And the official was right down there on it. Great, great balance by Joe, fighting to keep his feet. Yep, yep left foot might have gone on. Good call by the official. Auburn at midfield. Pitch back. James Boston. He might go. Far sideline. Goodbye, but there's a flag on the play. Great block by Stan White on that run. You'll see it in a second. This Hummer may be coming back. White conferring with Tommy Harper down there. There's a flag on the field holding Auburn. Bostic after his second collegiate touchdown here. Good job by LSU. Changing the direction of the play. Everybody in pursuit. Run. Nobody stayed at home. White Offense gets a block on Mouton. Buckles can't catch him. Vincent Fuller can't catch him. And there goes Bostic. That guy's a fullback. I think he may be playing tailback for a while. A lot of excitement. No points on the board. Yeah, this sophomore keeps running like that. And acting like that after he scores touchdowns, these fans will be in love with him for the next three years. He really gets them charged up. And a one-yard run earlier for Auburn's only touchdown of the day. And it'll be first and 21 back at the 39. Play action. White with time. Down the middle. Ball well overthrown. Orlando Parker, the intended receiver. Ray Adams back there. Man-to-man -man right with him. 
Good job by Ray Adams running over the top with Orlando Parker. Actually looking for the tight end crossing, then the split end coming into that deep middle area, but LSU was playing the type of defense that sat the free safety down in that hole. Good job by White reading that and then going up over the top, even though the ball was overthrown, because Parker didn't really have Ray Adams beat. Second and 21, Alex Smith, the only running back behind White. He's going to charge straight ahead, but he was tripped up. As Ricardo Washington, the inside linebacker, with his fifth tackle of the day, is the first man there to knock his feet out from under. Ricardo from Bogalusa, Louisiana, moved from tight end in the fall of 91, and he's a, he's a big playmaker. He's got great feet, good mobility down the line of scrimmage. They've got a good core of linebackers in there now for LSU with White, Washington, Des Hotel, and Swan. Good athletes. Third down and 17. Quite a deep drop. And a short pass. Only happening on that one. As the intended men was the fullback, Reed McMillan, Rodney Young, the backup strong safety who was in there in the pass coverage. And it'll be a kicking situation for Auburn with 13.20 to go in the third quarter. Good job by Stan White of ball security there. Nobody open, tried to dump it to the short guy, but didn't risk the interception downfield. Barry Daniel has a long kick of 54 this year against Ole Miss. He gets a beautiful tight spiral on this one. It'll land at the five. It'll be down inside the five-yard line. Hang time of four and a half seconds. Great distance to boot, and LSU will be deep in its own territory after a 57-yard catch. 13.08 to go. The Bayou Bengals down by six and a lot of real estate ahead. Four yards away from their own end zone is where LSU will start this drive. Buckles back there, you know, get away from it. Get away from it, Carlton. And then... Brian not, Grinsfield, the snapper, the guy downfield. That's great hustle. I'm not sure he had, he had possession of the ball, though. Robert Davis, the freshman on the carry. 51, James Willis getting the crowd into it. Closed end of the stadium down there. They're trying to intimidate LSU some. Let's get a quick injury update from the sideline and Bob Kessler. Well, if you guys notice, Carrick and Cunningham, 47, the linebacker, is back in the game. He had overheated. He's going to try and play. But Auburn has lost Jason Taylor, one of their offensive guards. He's out with a back injury. He's taking his pads off. He's done for the day, it looks like. Second down and nine from the four-and-a-half-yard line. Davis fumbles the football, and the Tigers got it back. Talk about lucky. Robert Davis was separated from the football, and then when he fell down, it rolled right back into his arms. Frank Godfrey. Well, the Robert is a, was helping out. Robert is a clean, living young man, and this proves it. He just never really has the ball, never really gets it from the quarterback, and now, now it's lost, and the scramble is on. Did Frank Godfrey come up with it? Yep. That's, his, that's his second one. Second fumble recovery, and Davis was on his back just to make sure it wasn't getting away. Third down and seven. Jacob in motion. Fumble by the fullback. Auburn with the football inside the 10. Looks like Otis Mounds, the free safety, number two. and hit the top of his hand instead of the palm. They missed the exchange. Jermaine Williams never got the football, and it's on the ground again, and LSU's luck runs out. Auburn Tigers recover. Otis Mounds gives them an opportunity to develop a little crack in the scoring here. Three back set. Frazier leading the way. Third man through Richardson with Bostic blocking ahead of him. So it was Frazier, Bostic, and Richardson in that order. And they got down to about the seven, maybe the six and a half. Last week, LSU's offense 
He gave up a few turnovers, but they were able to get the ball back during the same play. At least one time, Darren Landry tackled uh, Charlie Davidson from Mississippi State as he returned an interception, and Davidson caught, caught it up, and a big play for LSU. They got the ball back. Three running backs, two tight ends, Baxter and Malone. Fake to Frazier. Quarterback rollout. He will be down to the four-yard line. Stan White on the keeper. Ray Adams came up from right corner. And it'll be third and goal from the four. Nice job of coverage there by Ivory Hilliard. Staying with his man. Oftentimes down in this area, the defensive back gets caught looking into the backfield, gets caught up in the flow of the play. They try to come back to the delay to the tight end like they did to Baxter there. Thomas Bailey, Melvin Hines, and Orlando Parker all checked in. Once again, they'll try to run some kind of a screen. They throw the ball. Parker the motion man. Fake pitch. Now he's going to score! Stan White looking like he wanted to pitch the ball to Richardson. Maybe he didn't have the handle. He pulled it back. Touchdown. Stan White, the Kreskin of Auburn football. Oh, no, nope, no. Nope. I decide I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep that one. Great decision. Good heads-up play by Stan White. Feels good. LSU had it well defense. Good decision by Stan. Not bad for a guy who had run the ball 16 times for minus 65 yards coming in. That'll help his average. <laughs> Good decision on the corner. They're going to go for two here as they lead by 12 at the moment. I think your 13-point lead doesn't do them any good. White drills it in there, and it is caught in the end zone by Orlando Parker. That gives Auburn a two-touchdown lead with 10.53 to go third quarter. They try to run the screen inside. Parker is covered initially. He drifts back to the outside and zoom. White guns it in there. Good catch. Way to go, Stan. 21-7. More after this from your local station. Auburn kicking it off with a two-touchdown lead now. Handled by David Butler at his 10. He'll get out beyond the 20 to the 22-yard line. And We'll have another look at the good decision, the keeper, the touchdown by Stan White. And they ran the same play in fourth and two earlier in the game. Good decision. Ravel Roswan goes for the pitch man, and Stan White keeps it. They got this roll to the outside. You got to get contained, get contained, get the game. Make him pull up, he does, and he kind of wobbles one in there to Parker. And Stan White feeling good about football this Saturday afternoon in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Now LSU down by two touchdowns. Huffman still the man. Nobody to throw to. He'll cut outside. He'll get about five, five and a half yards on first down before Brian Robinson came up from strong safety to get him. Robinson, number 20, a redshirt freshman. Yes, Dillard High School, Fort Lauderdale. Otis Gray is the head coach down there at Dillard High School. It's like a farm club for, for, for <laughs> Auburn somehow. Five young men, young men, they're players. They'll call it second and five. five. To the fullback, ball on the ground. Auburn has it again. Ball picked up by Ricky Sutton, number 92. After playing mistake-free football in the second quarter, has come out of the locker room and dropped it all over the place. Boomo, Mike Pelton nails him. Ball on the ground. So you can see it again. Odell Beckham, the carrier, and then big number 92 pouncing on it. Unbelievable field position for Auburn again. Get 
appears to be one of the offensive linemen of, of LSU. Hard to tell at this moment just who it is. Good. A little interview time down on the sidelines. Let's check in with Bob Kesslin. We're down on the field. Lloyd Nix right here. Lloyd right over the camera. This, they celebrated today the 57 championship team, the only national championship team in Auburn history. This is the quarterback of the team, Lloyd Nix. It's nice to come back with all the memories and the feelings. It's a great place to come. Beautiful place to play football and a beautiful September Saturday. Let's reflect back on the 57 team. You started off that year as a halfback, right? And they switched to quarterback. I ended the year before, and when I came back for fall practice in 57, Coach Jordan asked me if I would switch to quarterback, and I did, and I'm tickled about it. It's been a, it's been a great year. Lots of memories, and of course, that was an undefeated team. Didn't go to a bowl game, though, because on you were on probation, right? Right. We were on probation in 57, and we were undefeated in 58 and could not go to a bowl, but we had two good years here at Auburn. Roll back some of the names so the people, the Auburn fans can remember them. Oh, Jackie Burkett, Zeke Smith, Billy Atkins, Tommy Lorena, Red Phillips, Jimmy Wilson, Mike Simmons, Cleve Wester, Ken Rice. You could just go on and on. You know, you talk about that team. It was quite an era, too, in Auburn football because Shrug Jordan was just getting things cranked up. Say that again. Well, he was just getting things. Really, the program was That's established right, yeah. in rolling. Yeah, we, uh, two years before that, had a 7-3 uh, record, and then... Uh, he was just getting really into his program and turned out 25 great years here at Auburn. Well, congratulations. I know it's fun to be back and see the guys again. Thank you. Lloyd Nix, the quarterback of that 57 Auburn National Championship team. All right, Bob, and the injury, Ross Setters, the LSU right tackle. He was in quite a bit of pain before they wheeled him off. His backup is Philip Simon, a sophomore. We'll check that out. Looks like they've got that left leg, the knee area, wrapped up. Right now, LSU is on defense as Stan White takes over again for Auburn with good field position. And tumbling ahead, his fullback, James Boston. Flag on the play. Tommy Harper's had a busy Saturday afternoon. Holding offensive line of scrimmage on the line of scrimmage. LSU has miscued three times. Interception, it led to a first quarter field goal. The fumble that led to the white touchdown run in this quarter. And we haven't filled in the blank on the third one yet. And that's only the one the ones that uh, Auburn recovered. Up until this point, LSU had not lost a fumble. I mean, they'd fumbled the ball, but the other team hadn't recovered it. And uh, they have put the ball on the ground too many times this afternoon. Stan White came into this year number three all time in the Auburn passing chart. 4,100 plus yards. Faces a first and 20 in a passing situation here. Deep drop. He lofts it out to the left. Ball is way too tall for his wide receiver, Melvin Hines. Good coverage there. Nobody home. He threw it out of bounds. Nice job. And you know, Stan White only needed 80 yards, Bob, to move past Reggie Slack into the number two slot on their all-time passing list. How about that Tennessee score? They're putting one on the Gators up at Neyland Stadium today. Second down and 20 now. White with a draw play to Bostic, the fullback. He's trying to get outside. LSU with good pursuit. Ball is on the floor. Curly tried to keep it in bounds. <laughs> zip, zip, zip. Stay right there. Curly knows his defense needs to come up with some plays now. Your offense has not been playing that well. Now you got to do it defensively. You've got to create some errors the same way the Auburn defense has created errors. And a good hustle here. Bostic again tries to bounce it outside. Watch Ivory Hillier coming. Number three. Good pursuit by Ricardo Washington. All there hustling to make the play. Won't stay in for the head coach, though. They're down in 23. Straight ahead. Reed McMillan. And good short coverage by LSU. They were willing to concede the short one to avoid the big play. And Ricardo Washington makes his sixth tackle of the day. 
So with nine minutes to go in the third quarter of play, it looks like Pat Dye will take a field goal attempt here as Scott Etheridge has checked in. That's Randy Campbell talking to Stan White. Randy was a very successful quarterback here in the uh, early 80s for Auburn. This one will be just short of 50 yards. He's only a couple of yards off the middle of the field. Play help in the holder. This one looks good. And he's got it by plenty. Scott Etheridge more than makes up for his long-range miss earlier today as he kept the head down and drilled that one. That one would have gone over from about 60. And with 8.25 to go, third quarter, Auburn 24, LSU 7. Welcome back, Jordan-Harris Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. 8.25 to go, third quarter. With a touchdown by the quarterback, Stan White. And a Scott Etheridge field goal. Auburn has taken a 17-point lead here. Two-point conversion in between. LSU will get the ball back. They've really only had one drive worthy of note all afternoon. Brian Karkowska will be the kickoff man. Gary Pegues and Hardy Moore back to receive it. He gets a foot into this one out of the end zone. Now we know why they have him kicking off. <laughs> he's got some range. <laughs> he doesn't have to be. He's the John Daly of uh, oh, yeah. Auburn football, right? <laughs> Whack. A week from today, we'll be at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central. The Wildcats and the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Both clubs playing non-conference games today. They'll be itching to get back at it in SEC play next Saturday. From the 20, little reverse. Auburn snuffed it out pretty well. And LSU will get maybe a half yard on the play as Carrick and Cunningham is the man who ends up making the tackle. Artie Moore, who had just helped on the kickoff team, on the end around. Auburn stays at home. Well prepared defense. They stay at home. They flip it back to Artie Moore and see Tom Turner in pursuit. Good block by Todd Bolin. Who's in there for? Excuse me. That wasn't Todd Bolin. That, that was, was Moai. Yeah, good job by Kevin Moai. Well, you had to feel for Alonzo Etheridge. He thought he was going to get a tackle for loss, and suddenly, out of nowhere, blocked down to the ground. Huffman drills one out to midfield, and it's off the hands of Tory James out of midfield. They're now moving into the fourth quarter up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Leads it by the same score we have here. Our executive Virginia producer over Georgia excited. Tech. Jimmy Rayburn, huh? Yeah. Maryland, West Virginia. Field goal, the advantage there for the Terps. Georgia rebounding nicely against the visitors from the West Coast. Oklahoma State playing at Michigan. Wolverines without Elvis Gerbach. And the Sooners by three over Southern Cal. Play quarterback and fullback running into each other. Odell Beckham was the man running into Ryan Huffman and LSU with another stall drive. NC State hanging tough, but Florida State leads on the road. NC State once led that game three nothing. Missouri with an upset brewing in Columbia. Still early there though. And Virginia Tech over Temple. Third quarter action there. LSU will kick it off again. Thomas Bailey, ever dangerous, is out there at midfield. And it was almost blocked after a bad snap. What a day for field position it has been for the Auburn Tigers. And what a tough day kicking for Brian DeSells. His snapper is Chris Watermeyer. And you don't need anything to distract you when things aren't going well, and things have not been going well for Brian so far today. And uh, a first hop and somebody in your face, and you get a, that's how you get a 30-yard punt. LSU 46 is where Auburn starts out. And there's a man coming around from the other side. 
Robert Scott, a freshman out of Winter Haven, Florida. He's a third string wide receiver behind Melvin Hines and Del McGee. Auburn starting to play some more people on this hot afternoon, shuttling folks in and out. Reed McMillan has just come in at fullback to spell Tony Richardson. And they're going to pretty much alternate series in there at fullback. And they do have a bevy of wide receivers here at Auburn. Uh, several of them are hurt. LSU Tigers came across. They're all pointing at Greg Thompson, the center. Offside violation, neutral zone, defensive team. But they were all wrong. I thought was pointing at him for sure. You know, a defensive lineman will read the football. They'll a good one that wants to really come off the football. He's he's got his eye on the ball, and, and the Thompson might have given him a little glitch. Ike sure thought he did. Now it's second and five. Give it to the tailback inside the 40 and down near first down yardage is Adrian Reese. Got the freshman in there now, Adrian Reese. Spelling Bostick and Smith. Here's that set of linebackers. Watch him move to the ball. This hotel, walk up. Good job of blocking by Greg Thompson. Keeping this hotel out of there. And Reese, a local kid out of Auburn High School. Wayne Prophet runs the program there. And it'll be third and one. Straight ahead they go. Reed McMillan, the fullback, down to the 30. They'll move the chains and move the clock as it goes under six minutes to go, third quarter. Let's watch these rascals work. Thompson coming off the ball well. Anthony Redmond now playing left guard, and Reed McMillan just solid leg drive and running there by Reed McMillan, who started nine games last year for him. Had a problem with his knee in the spring, but seems to be healthy now. Auburn spreading the offense around. Seven runners, seven receivers have touched the football. And again, Adrian Reese. Twice in his career, he went over 1,000 yards. Averaged seven a carry in his high school career right here in town. Had a 99-yard kickoff return for a score last year. And this is good old conservative. You know, sometimes people get spoiled, right, Bob? And, and you know, you get used to winning. And golly, it's not as much fun as it used to be. And gee whiz, it's not as fancy as it used to be. And then all of a sudden, it drifts away from you for a while. You quit winning as often as you used to. And then as a fan, you say, well, you know, look, it, I like winning the boring way as opposed to losing the fancy way. And that's what's happening here. They're coming back, the ball on the ground, grind it out, beat them up front. Second down and seven, and Stan White will call a timeout with 4.55 to go in the third quarter. Well, that time, the cornerback Mike Stepto started to sneak in on Stan, and there are some patterns that you have on that you've got a hot receiver that you can go to in a corner blitz or a safety blitz, and there's some plays you just have to get out of. That time, he didn't have enough time left on the clock to get out of it, so called timeout. It's Clay Helton was in the picture there for second, number nine. That's Kim Helton's son, who's uh, with the L.A. Raiders and coached with a lot of great teams. Well, the route is on now. Schuler has done it again for the Volunteers. A 31-7 score. We're told it's raining quite a bit, and that certainly has to be bad for Florida, although they say the receiving team has the advantage in rain, but when it's driving rain, right. it's got to be pretty tough to come from 31-7. Yeah, you, gotta, you have to give Larry Marmee a lot of credit there, the defensive coordinator off. Florida's got a tough offense to stop. I mean, you can they've got a young defense, so they're going to make mistakes. You can count on getting some points. But offensively, they're awfully hard to derail, and seven points is uh, amazing. Second down and seven after Stan White called the timeout. Not a huge day passing, but he hasn't whoa, hit the half whoa, one. Whoa. And he really took a big hit. Joe Frazier, the ball carrier. I'm not sure that, you know, Tommy Harper threw a flag on that. I'm... 
Rovelro Swan, the man who flattened the quarterback. First foul, defensive team, roughing the passer, first foul. Roughing the passer, the call. And this was a nasty one. Watch Stan White come out, and he makes the handoff. He kind of fakes the bootleg. And out of your picture, Rovelro Swan really hits him. But, I mean, it wasn't an illegal hit. It wasn't in the head. It was just a good, solid whack. So I'm not sure, uh, but it certainly looked. It was unnecessary, I guess, and it was kind of violent looking. It was a little late. I think yeah, that's right. why they right. called. T Tommy heard that big noise. He thought, probably got to call something here. Can't let that happen. First down, White still in there. And he gives it off to his fullback. Tough running for Reed McMillan. Out of Selma, Alabama, a fullback who's a junior, six foot, 221. Florida State now taking control of the road as they lead NC State. That was to be the Wolfpack coming out party in the ACC, but looks like the visitors from Tallahassee have doused it pretty well. Well, Mrs. Bowden's going to be happy today. She probably, from what Tommy said, she was she's at home today. She's got too many kids with and husbands with we're well, only one husband, <laughs> too many kids <laughs> kids with games, and so this is going to be her best way to see it all. On second and seven, Alex Smith. The ball carrier, but not for far or long. Bo Davis coming up to hit him. And here comes the sleep trio into the game. You got Bailey, Hines, Parker. And you're looking at some guys who spent an awfully long time on the field today, especially early. And there's a ways to go in this one. About 15 and a half. 18 and a half minutes left to play. White, a quick look outside, and too tall it was for Orlando Parker. On fourth and eight, hello again, Scott Etheridge. This will be a 30-yarder near the hash mark. They'll even step it up a, another yard or so and make it a 29-yarder. He drilled one from almost 50 moments ago. Trying to make it three out of four. He's now five of six on the year. And with 3.12 to go, it's a 27-7 Auburn lead. That's about as good as a kicker can look after how bad he looked on the long attempt earlier. He obviously went back to work on his fundamentals on the sideline, and he's drilled a couple. Pat and I talked about the difference in this game being the fact that LSU had won one big one, and, well, with 18 minutes left to go in the football game, Auburn seems to have this one pretty well under control. And so... Pat Dye's team is now going to have a substantial a st substantial victory under their belt. Thomas Bailey cooling off on this hot day. Team up by 20 with 3.12 to go, only the third quarter still. But things can happen. LSU erupted for 21 points against Mississippi State last week, so... Some of that was on special teams. We'll see who they come out with that quarterback after this return. Artie Moore is back with Gary Pegues. Moore says, here I come. Angle to the middle of the field. He's in trouble now. He is brought down at the seven yard line by Terry Solomon, a linebacker on special teams. Not a very good decision. Well, if you're going to come out, come out. That's all right. Come on out of there. But you start running across the field, you got a problem. There's just too many fast people in this league. They're going to run you down. Get up field. Ball on the seven. LSU down 27-7. Jamie Howard, a freshman quarterback out of Lafayette, Louisiana, is in there. And he falls on the first snap. I guess that answers our question. He's just not A, B, C. He was D, none of the above. Uh-huh. Well, 
Well, you have to say one thing for Curly Holman. He is in control of his program, Tim. He makes gutsy moves to send messages to people. And here he is with a freshman quarterback in there and three others with more experience standing around. He's going to stick with what he thinks is right. There's no question about it. Second down and four. Whistle on the snap and a flag laying at the five-yard line. Dead ball, false start, movement offensive line for the snap. Now remember the first quarter when LSU could not get a first down. They did okay in the second quarter on their long touchdown drive that covered 70 yards in 12 plays. But here we go again with the young quarterback now leaving. No first downs for the Tigers. In the third quarter of play, Ryan Huffman is back in there behind center. Draw play, Davis just did get out of the end zone. Chucky Johnson from right tackle was there to meet him. Ricky Sutton came up to help out from right defensive end. 79 and 92, putting a stop to Robert Davis. Third and 17. This is not going in the right direction for LSU. Ray and Jacob split out to the near side. Huffman will run for room up the field. Nice throw. Now, where will they measure his progress? They're close to the first down. They had to get about a foot short of the 18. The spot will mean everything here. <laughs> I, I, call, I call this under pressure. Huffman comes out of there. Look at a great job by Whitehead, keeping his feet, and he's coming, pound, pound, pound. And here comes James Willis, and he's going to tattoo him. And he gets the ball off and completes the pass. That's an outstanding throw. On the run, filled with fear. <laughs> Put it on the money. Great job. And they got the first down. They made it by plenty, by at least a foot. So a perfect route and a perfect pass as Jamie Howard, the freshman quarterback, will now check back in. So evidently Huffman is our get-out-of-trouble guy. And the young quarterback will take over. Well, I think they just decided that that's a little bit too much pressure for a young guy to handle. You know, the two-yard, the five was okay, but the two-yard line, that's a little bit much. Let's see what he can do from the 18. And he drills it out to Wesley Jacob. That'll get them about eight yards or so on first down. We're in the final minute of the third quarter as the clock moves down to 40 seconds. And I think that uh, you know, Curly Hallman and George Hafner, are, you know, they're happy with their quarterbacks, Loop and Daigle and Huffman, but they're, they're in search of the guy that really is going to do it for them. And I'm not sure that they've made their decision as far as who's going to carry them for the next several years. I'll call it a second and a long one. And Jermaine Williams back in the game is met head on by James Willis, the middle linebacker. And that's something that you never want to happen. It's never going to be an enjoyable experience for you if you're a running back. Incidental face mask, defense, first down. So the incidental face mask, just a five yard penalty, will move them out beyond the 30 yard line. That'll give them another first down. 15 seconds to go, third quarter. Auburn 27, LSU 7. Willis last year was the co-SEC, not last year, the year before, co-SEC freshman of the year at linebacker, and he is a dominating presence in the middle. Led them in tackles coming in, and the Tigers of LSU did not get the playoff in time. They'll switch ends. 15 minutes to go. LSU went a long time in that quarter without any first downs. All the scoring came from Auburn. And the hometown Tigers lead it by 20. One quarter to go. Fourth quarter about to get underway. The guys in the white helmets have this one their way now. And the guys in purple and gold have a long way to go. LSU down by 20. They have a first and 10 at their 31-yard line. 
Howard, the freshman quarterback, drills it out left side. Again, it's Wesley Jacob. Little escape action there, and he gets out to the 36-yard line. We'll update the stats for you now through three quarters of play. Total yardage, Auburn, 99 more than the visitors. Just a great job by the Auburn defense. They only let LSU really out of the out of the cage one time. Second and five. Look out here, Howard gets it away, deflecting off the hands of Brandon Stelly, a redshirt freshman tight end out of Opelousas, Louisiana. Do not adjust your TV. You're looking through the fan at the Auburn bench. That's Stan White. And he's going to bask in the glory of this one for a while. It's been a while since they've won a big game here in Auburn, and he's been having fun this afternoon. I'll tell you, that Virginia team's looking good in the ACC. Third and five now. And up over the top of Wesley Jacob. Chris Schelling, the strong safety out there defending. And that'll be it for this LSU drive with 14.43 to go in the ballgame. And Auburn not giving them any room underneath. Usually at this time in the game, 27 to 7, you lay back, you start playing those three deep and dropping your linebackers deep. Auburn's still challenging, not really giving Howard much room uh, to operate in. Thomas Bailey back there. Brian Gassells with the kick. He has just not had a good day at all. He gets a nice bounce. That'll add about 13 yards to his kick this time. So it only went about 29 in the air, but he gets credit for a 42-yard punt. So we will be back in a moment. 14.28 to go. Auburn with the ball, leading by 20. Gamecocks and Cats next week. And a few showers possibly in the area. First down and 10 at the 22. Auburn in control with 14.28 to go. Stan White all the way under center today. This will back Reed McMillan with the carry. Well, this was a rather important ball game for LSU today. Not only to get another conference win, but because of their upcoming schedule. Colorado State in Baton Rouge next week. But then they play Tennessee at home at Florida, host Kentucky, and then go to Ole Miss, and then host Alabama. Now that's a pretty wicked five-week stretch. Curly Holman needed this one today. Six. Alex Smith. The penetration by John Morgan. Big John, senior, and he's he's been plagued by him injuries throughout his career. Had a knee problem, had a shoulder problem, but he's hung in there and he's just a solid player in that rotation of Mike Bugars. They needed them all today on this day because this this kind of day is going to suck a lot of energy out of you. There's no question about it. Third down and eight. They've got to get out to the 32 yard line. Like with plenty of time. He will go long down the field. Orlando Parker and it is picked off inside the 30 by Ray Adams. Adams with his second interception of the year. And his sixth career interception. He had one against Mississippi State a week ago, and he adds one on that play. And a good job by Ray Adams going up for the football. Defensive backs at LSU coached by Steve Davis. And most defensive backs can't make catches like that. Just an exceptional job of fighting for the ball. Why throw the ball at this point in the game? Because coaches have been around long enough and they know anything can happen and they're trying to develop some confidence in terms of Stan White, so I think that's why they're throwing it. Well, if you're going to throw, throw it that long because it's like a punt. And look at that good defense. Chris Schelling matched up against a bigger man. That was Harold Bishop, the 6'6 tight end. Quarterback pressure came from Jason Merchant. 
So I think that's the point of the pass. If you're going to throw it, throw it way upfield. Like a punt. Not a great punt, but a decent one. You know, Tommy Bowden talked about eliminating the turnovers. That one, that's one thing that hurt him last year and in, in, uh, in this particular football game. There have been two interceptions, both, both of them on deep balls, one on the first possession of the game. Second and ten, young quarterback. Oh! oh! I could have had six, says Benny Pierce. He was thinking touchdown. Harold Bishop, the intended receiver, Pierce cut in front of him. Linebackers don't think catch the ball. They think of punish the ball. Punish the ball. Here it comes. Yeah, I'll punish it, Benny. <laughs> great position. Great spot to be. You can't catch the ball with that many fingers taped up. That's the problem. <laughs> Third, Good job, Benny. Third down and ten. Look out. Howard gets rid of it. He's got it on the right side for Wesley Jacob, and that's a freshman with poise under pressure. Now that looks smooth, didn't it? They're bringing, they look like they're bringing shelling up the middle. And uh, Brownie outside. Here comes shelling right in his face, and he stayed right with Wesley Jacob, got the crossing route. Good read. Puts it on the money. First down at the 41, and here comes Odell Beckham out to midfield. Slanting off that left side, and he'll pick up about nine yards on first down. Got to give Beckham a lot of credit this year. He's a tailback for a couple of years, and uh, which is a glamour position. And there were a few disciplinary problems, and he handled the repercussions of those actions well. And uh, they talked to him this fall about moving to fullback. And, of course, you get a lot less action carrying the ball, but unselfishly, he said, okay with me. If it's best for the team, let's make it happen. Maybe LSU will make it happen here on second and one. It's basically a free down, and they are looking to throw. It's a long one out to the right side, and it is caught inside the 15. Down to the five is Shedrick Wilson. Shedrick Wilson, the freshman out of Thomasville, Georgia, who caught almost a thousand yards worth of passes a year ago. It's just a timing route here. There's nothing fancy about it. He lays it up in the air. Wilson outruns Calvin Jackson and pulls it down. Super, super throw. A lot of time to go in this game. They've got first and goal at the four with 11.45 to go. Jermaine Williams running off the right side. Not much there. Ricky Sutton, who's been busy at right defensive end. In the words of our spotter, Kim Anderson, there seems to be a plethora of true freshmen playing this year in the SEC. A true freshman quarterback, four true freshman running backs. You got a true freshman wide receiver. That's just for LSU. That's not counting the true freshman playing for Auburn. And goal. Howard to throw up over the top. Man open, but he couldn't get his feet in. Wesley Jacob was on the line. He just had about it. Those are somebody else. Too little right. room. Those are somebody else's footprints that you're pointing to, Wesley. You know, don't check the bottom of your shoes. They have white on them. Good throw by Howard. Lost it up over the top. Jacobs behind, I mean, plenty of room. And uh, he'll learn from that. Third and goal now from the four. LSU has to get a touchdown here. Howard looking to that side, and it's dropped in the end zone by Shedrick Wilson. He made the outstanding catch three plays ago and couldn't catch this one right in his belly. Tory Tor James Tory was James the motion the man. Shedrick Wilson is open. Howard finds him. Ooh. But Shedrick can't find the handle on the football. They all seem to catch their head well after they drop the ball, though. You know? Easier to hold on to that. Now a fourth and goal. Garrett in motion. 
Howard throws it, and this time it's caught. They go right back to the same guy. <laughs> Jedrick Wilson with his first touchdown catch of the year. And how about this freshman quarterback, Jamie Howard? Man, oh man, you know, show, showing a ton of poise as far as that goes. At, and his response after Wilson had dropped the first one was simply negligible. He didn't jump up and down. He didn't throw his arm down or anything. He just said, okay, good. Well, let's try it again. And he goes right back to him. And so now the other one's forgotten. And uh, Shedrick can go to sleep tonight and not worry about that. Good job, Joey. Bad, Jamie. Bad hurt, Kent. Spelling Pedro Suarez, who is suspended, and now it's a 27-14 game with 10.53 to go. The story right now, Jamie Howard leading these LSU Tigers, and it's a touchdown to Shedrick Wilson. This ball game is far from over. LSU kicked the extra point. Two touchdowns and two PATs, and they could be a winner in this game. They will kick it off. Matt Herkamp will let it fly. Otis Mounds, two yards deep. Now the ball is out in front, and they've got no choice. It's Frazier running it. And just over the 10, maybe the 11-yard line, and that's a big play for LSU. I think it has something to do with this end of the field. Otis has trouble handling this one. Earlier in Ellis, you player gave us the uh, exact interpretation of catching a kickoff. Good job by Frazier there to pick it up. Well, if you remember correctly, that's where LSU had a couple of fumbles at that end. It's the end where Wilson dropped a pass before he got the touchdown. One turnover in this ball game is right back close. Auburn with a single back set. They will give it off to Boston, who's really been a hard worker for the hometown Tigers today. LSU fired up. And I think we can't let your effort to be here go unrecognized. I think you should get the Jefferson Pilot uh, Courageous Award here, you know, Medal of Honor for doing a Mets game last night, driving to Philadelphia, catching a 5.30 plane to Atlanta, and then driving over here. You know, I think this is unheard of dedication and commitment. I call it dumb scheduling on my part. <laughs> Look out from behind. He just got it away in time. And it's a good thing he dumped it out there. Let's get on to the other Bob. Hey, Mr. Kessling, what's happening on the sideline? We have the new athletics director at Auburn University, Mike Lude, with us. Mike, tell us about your tenure so far at Auburn. Well, I've been here three months, and it's been very, very enjoyable. And, and this is some football game today. And hopefully we can hang on. This is basically what this program needed is a good, good victory and a good game today. Well, we aren't out of the woods yet. They come back real hard in the fourth quarter. Talk about some of the hardships, though, of you trying to put all that behind you. Meant a lot of fences here at Auburn. No, uh, everybody's been really willing to help and put the thing together and get some reorganization done. And I hope that uh, it works out real well. Mike, thanks. Good luck to you in the time. Thank you, Bob. This is a third and nine play, and Stan White probably does the right thing. Not much going on on that play right from the start. Rovell Rose Swan was the man chasing him all over the place. And that LSU defense, spending a lot of time on the field today, gets to run off and take a breather, and the Tiger man knows this is not over yet. Now, the punting game has certainly worked in favor of Auburn. I mean, every time Auburn's had to punt, it's been a great punt, and LSU has struggled while punting. Carlton buckles the LSU Tiger back near midfield to receive it. Terry Daniel, the kicker. It's wobbling on him. Won't hang up very long. Buckles has it. He'll angle for the 40-yard line, oh. far side. And we've got a uh. clip, I believe, as he gets all the way down inside the five-yard line. But it looks like Gabe Northern, number 88, a linebacking freshman out of Baton Rouge, who did some big-time clipping on the punt return. But things like that will happen when you have a kick that only hangs up in the air for three seconds. During the run back, flipping, spot a foul, 15-yard penalty. Watch number 88 for LSU. I don't know, I don't know. Head in front, you know, I... 
Uh, those those are questionable. And uh, I'm sorry, Bobby. That was close enough. Yeah, it, it, nobody was in danger. It did. It looked like the guy was even, as far as I was concerned. And the head was in front. But it gets called, and that's how it goes. And so you gotta play with what they dealt you. Here's Cape Northern, the man who was flagged down. LSU still has good field position at their 45, and up in Tennessee, maybe too little, too late for the Gators. 8.57 to go. Howard, the quarterback, man open! He's got it! And down the far sideline, Scott Ray is into the end zone! A 55-yard play on first down. They didn't need the punt return. Jamie Howard automatics to this play. See him at the line of scrimmage. He gives a fist out to both sides. Auburn in kind of a punt look. Smith expecting help deep. There was an error in the secondary. Smith thought he was going to get back up there. And Howard put it on the money. Now, why would they play their fourth team quarterback? Because next week, he's going to be their first team quarterback. It's right through from Matt Herkin. And the crowd here in Auburn is shocked. Their team was up 27 to 7 just a few minutes ago. It's now 27 21. And we've got a long way to go. Eight minutes and nine seconds. There are a couple of hundred LSU folks here. They've waited a long time this afternoon for some excitement. And they have two touchdowns in a span of two minutes and four seconds to make it a 27-21 lead. Ah, the game of football. And it's over up in Knoxville. 31-14, Tennessee has upset Florida. But maybe that's only a ranking upset. SEC fans know it's no upset to go into Knoxville and get beat. That's what happened to Steve Spurrier's Gators today. The season is young. Thomas Bailey is back for the kick at the goal line. Cutting left side. Forget it. He is hammered inside the 10 yard line. LSU is going crazy as Bobby Williams was in on the hit. And now the pressure shifts to the Auburn offense. And they got the big man back there now, Bailey. And he's the guy that holds the SEC record. Remember, he's got a broken jaw. So uh, Auburn going all out here. Just great coverage by the special team, team of LSU. Bobby Williams, Lee Williams, they are fighting Tigers now. Yeah. 8.44 to go. Auburn Tigers. Well, this play looks like a rugby scrum with about 10 or 12 bodies moving around together. You saw Robert Desotel, the strong inside linebacker there. Number 46. Pat Dye been in many close games, both of them have been in close games all their careers, of course. And now that stat is coming into today. You can add 14 more on to that. So it's 43-14, the LSU fourth quarter advantage. And the problem for LSU last year was a, a lack of ability of hanging on in the fourth quarter. So Curley playing more with his people, people that he's recruited, people that understand his philosophy. You know, Pat Dye, they're trying to recapture here what they had a few years ago. That was Bostic on the carry a moment ago, and not much there. They'll be faced with a third and five. Right now, the most crucial offensive play all day for the home team. They've got to get a first down and keep the ball for a while. Here come the Tigers of LSU, and that forces them to throw it away. And it'll be a kicking down for Auburn as LSU came blitzing. Ricardo Washington from inside linebacker, the first guy in there. That's Thylan Smith. He's the inside linebacker, coach. 
Those looks are like, my guys. He's like that, looks like that guy in the, the Predator. <laughs> well, his you defense. You can tell the defensive coaches. They're not the pretty ones. <laughs> well, his defense was eating up Auburn on that drive. That's exactly right. Good job. Good job. What a great game. Jerry Daniel will kick it away. Oh, I love my job. I love my job. Look at Whoa. this kick. Whoa, this is a long one. Back at the 29. But LSU will still have good position. How to be on the 40-yard line as Carlton Buckles fights hard for some yardage. You know, that ball only hung up in the air for about four and a half seconds. It wasn't that high, but it was a home run. And they are going crazy in the far corner where the LSU fans are. They have a chance to take the lead here and they've got seven minutes to go. And the story of the day, Jamie Howard, the freshman quarterback. Draw play, Davis. Just a couple of yards, James Willis came to get him. Willis, that middle linebacker, number 51, out of Johnson High School, Huntsville. And he's on his way to being an all-SEC performer, maybe an all-American before he gets out of here. There was a guy that played like him down on the field at halftime, Quentin Riggins, who was a leader in some of their championship years. Second down and eight. Skies are darkening here in Auburn. Howard, great protection, but he drills it short. It'll be a third down play coming up. Let's get it down to the field, Bob. A little moist it's getting. It is starting to sprinkle just a bit. There's some big time dark clouds uh, off to the distance. One thing I think might be a key, there's now a breeze starting to pick up, but it's going to be to LSU's back as they come down the field. So if it turns out to be a battle of field goals, LSU might have the advantage. But remember, Pedro Suarez, their outstanding field goal kicker, was left behind on a suspension. So he is not here. But LSU does have the wind at its back right now and momentum. Suarez, all SEC last year, a redshirt freshman, Matt Hurkamp, has taken his place. Third down and eight for LSU. Howard looking long, overthrows, intercepted, Fred Smith for Auburn. Smith, a big playmaker for this Auburn defense. Only though he's a soft, he's only a sophomore, but he comes up with the big play. Good jam by Cunningham. Good underneath coverage by Otis Mounds. It's not what Jamie Howard expected, but he misfires. Good play by Freddie Smith. He was all SEC freshman last year, freshman All-American with four interceptions. One of them was a touchdown against Tennessee, and he picks off his first of the year. Turnovers continue to plague the Tigers of LSU, and with 6.13 to go, the Auburn Tigers will have it back at their own 28-yard line. Alex Smith, nothing there. This LSU defense has really put in a day's work. It has. In the first half, they were constantly in their own backyard from turnovers and short punts. Uh, they just have had to fight, 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 and, uh, and they have done that. You see walk up 85, Anthony Williams back up. They got some of the backups in there now trying to give those front liners a rest. It's been a long, long, hot afternoon for them. Second down and nine, clock running with five and a half minutes left. Take to Boston. And he rolls it out to Baxter. Close to first down yardage out at the 38-yard line. Rovelro Swan from outside linebacker out there with the stop. Good call by Tommy Bowden. Almost an impossible play to stop. You're going to see Baxter's going to check up for a second on the linebacker. Then he pushes off. You know, he throws him away and runs his pattern. Little pattern to the outside. Now fights upfield. Swan trying to catch up with him. Knocks him out of bounds. But... Third and short. Yeah, it's very short. They only need about the length of the football. We'll see if White even chances a handoff here. He will. I'd say Bostic is a pretty sure bet. 
Was there a fumble on the play? And LSU has the football. Vincent Fuller, the man celebrating. A simple dive off the left tackle, and Bostic had the first down before losing possession. That was Mike Bugar. That's Mike Bugar there, the defensive coordinator for LSU. He preaches the same thing that Wayne Hall preaches from Auburn. You know, you got to make the big plays in a critical situation. Yeah, he never really had it very well, did he? Bostic's coming in. He's going up over the top, and somebody yanks it out. It was an, an arm from the interior. It would be hard to identify. LSU at the 41 of Auburn. Howard in trouble. And they suck in for about a three-yard loss. Locked down to 4.30 to go. And on the field for Auburn is James Willis, their starting middle linebacker. That'll put a bit of a hush on the ballpark. A sophomore Mike Pelton is his backup. Willis and Carrick and Cunningham have gone pretty much all day long at those inside backer positions. Good. Trainer just asking him to move his legs, and he can do that. That's the scary thing that you don't, you try not to think about as an athlete because you've had friends. I went to college with Daryl Stingley, and, you know, Daryl, of course, a great receiver for the New England Patriots who was paralyzed in a football accident incident it's one thing you try not to think about it looks like he just got knocked unconscious which is be grateful for that here he comes closing in on Joey Howard he actually runs into one of his own teammates gets hit on the side of the head Second down, 14. They have to get just short of the 30-yard line. Ryan Huffman is back in a quarterback for LSU. Nowhere to roll, but he gets away. And dives inside the 35, carrying that ball very dangerously. And he holds on <laughs> down to the 34. They'll be faced with a third and about three. Yeah, we would we would say this is not necessarily ball security here. Uh, they put Huffman in because I'm sure George Hafner had in mind that he wanted the quarterback to run the ball and uh, good effort, great effort by Ryan Huffman. Third down and a long three. Now Jamie Howard is back in. He'll look to throw. Ball is tipped and almost intercepted by Chris Schelling. The tip by Damon Primus. Great pressure by the Auburn front. They surrounded Howard. Howard trying to get the ball across the middle to his flanker coming across the middle. So Howard has certainly been productive. Six completions for 151 yards and been very composed while he's doing it. He's back in there. Fourth down and three. This could be the ball game, but there still is 3.30 to go. Rather slow on the exchange. He throws it beautifully for a first down to the 20-yard line, and it's Wesley Jacob again. The freshman to the senior. And a huge play for LSU at the 20-yard line of Auburn. It looked like there was some confusion on the snap. It looked a little bit uncomfortable. Howard comes out of there with it, unloads it in the flat. Freddie Smith had drifted way back to try to get protection underneath. Jacob is now out of the game. 3-10 on the clock. They run it on first down straight ahead. It looked like Jermaine Williams, the fullback. There you have the time remaining, down below three. LSU has not used any timeouts. So it's right there for them as they try to make the dramatic comeback from a 27-7 deficit. They're now down by six with the ball and in scoring position. Second and six. 16 and a half yard line. 
Stewart drills it. What a catch! First down, Tory James. How, how did that happen? How did that get in there? It looked to me like Calvin Jackson might be going the other way with that one. What a great throw by Joey Howard. Right on the sideline. Looking there all the way. Calvin Jackson, perfect position. And Torrey James, who's listed in the program as a quarterback, <laughs> comes down with it. I guess he'll get some INTs if they ever put him back there. First and goal at the nine. The freshman, Jamie Howard, having the day of his life. Torrey James in motion. A pullback. Look at Jermaine Williams down inside the five. Great drive down into the LSU end zone, actually. Their fans are right down in that corner on the far side. And the clock continues to run down toward two minutes. It'll be second and goal at the two. Unbelievable comeback by LSU. Really got to give the Tigers a lot of credit for coming off the mat. They look like they were out of sight and heading the other way, and Jamie Howard comes into the game. Williams again. He is into the end zone to tie the game. With a minute 43 to go, Jermaine Williams, the fullback, with the score. Being a defensive player, I always like him to take longer to score. Don't leave him with a minute and 43 to come back. Great effort here by this LSU football team. Had trouble laying the ball on the ground earlier in the game, but uh, they have fought back and are in a position right now to take the lead. If Matt Herkamp, the redshirt freshman, can knock it through, and he does. 28-27 LSU in the final minute, 43. Two teams have had some great games over the years, Tim Foley. Some argue the greatest game in LSU history was their 1969 win over Auburn. And they had a memorable meeting in 88 when LSU upset Auburn, number three ranked in the nation. Give it to Williams up the middle. Once again, that right side of the Simnick set. Well, Setters is out of there now. Brian Madden. See Ronnie Simnick. Just doing a great job in there. Frank Godfrey. That night, back in 88, when Tommy Hodgson hit Eddie Fuller late with a minute 41 to play, two seconds later than this one, it caused such a great explosion from that crowd at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. It registered on the seismograph in the geology department on the LSU campus at the exact moment the touchdown was scored, 9.32 p.m. Now, this one a little earlier in the day, but just a little earlier, two seconds in the game. You got to give Kevin Mawai and Landry and Godfrey, those guys up front, a lot of credit. They've been, been doing an excellent job in the second half here. And, and then a true freshman. This kid's a true freshman, Jamie Howard. Firing it to another true freshman, handing it to another true freshman. I'm, Curley and his staff have done an excellent job of recruiting and getting some guys in there that you can build a program around. Here comes the kick. Matt Herkin. It's high in the air. It'll drop inside the five. Joe Frazier on the return, and meeting him head on was Mike Steptoe, a senior quarterback working in the special teams, number 24. There it is for Auburn. 138 to go. And they will have to go 84 and a half yards. They trail by a point at home to a team that beat Mississippi State a week ago. Now, what's the range of their kicker, Bob? What's the range of their kicker? Scott Everidge? Yeah. He's got a 49-yarder today. And so that one he knocked over probably would have gone from 60. So they got a kicker that can nail it. Yep. Stan White. A high throw. Reed McMillan. Nice catch. Out to the 27-yard line. LSU players trying to hold him down. 
Is it far enough to move the change? The clock runs for a moment while the officials decide. Now they'll stop it for the measurement. And White has been here before. He did a nice job trying to get it to Max uh, Baxter in between the linebackers. It wasn't there. So he read back toward himself to McMillan and dumped it off. Got a 10-yard gain. He's not going to get a lot of pressure. Usually, LSU is going to come with three men, and they're not really upfield. They're reading. They're trying to flush. And every once in a while, Mike Bugar will change it up and come after him. See, not under a lot of pressure. He goes to one, two, and then comes back to number three, Reed McMillan. And Rodney Young puts a hat on him. So about four inches short. It's a second down play. So Stan White can sort of forget about the yardage here and try to come up with something big. They've got guys on the outside that can fly. You have to be concerned about that. You have to put underneath defenders out on them to try to knock them off their stride early so they can't just explode down the field. They'll go for the sure yardage, and Matt McMillan, Reed McMillan, has the first down to the 34-yard line. They'll get another quick stoppage of the clock to move the change with a minute 15 to go. They're in the shotgun set. Got three wide receivers plus Baxter. Shotgun. White. Plenty of time. Up the middle for the big tight end. Fred Baxter at the 44-yard line. A courageous throw. David Walkup is almost escorting Fred Baxter there. I mean, I... Uh, just an excellent job of threading the needle there by Stan White. They move the chains again. 106 to go. Now they start the clock. As White looks up over the top and lost one for the sideline, but Baxter is well out. It worked. <laughs> he came down right near the big fan that cools off the bench. A heavy fall by the big tight end who already has sore ribs and a pulled groin muscle. That time they got the corner to bite on a hitch by Bailey on the outside. Got the corner to, to bite on that, and Baxter came in over the top. Second down and 10. Straight ahead, there's Reed McMillan, the fullback. He escapes down to the 45. They're about anywhere from 8 to 10 yards away from good range for Scott Etheridge. So Auburn has plenty of time now to get the ball down into field goal territory. 50 seconds to go. Under pressure, White gets rid of it. That time they ran the same pattern that they had run earlier, Bob. They tried to hitch the corner. But this time, the safety, Vince Fuller, coming over to help out on the deep route by Baxter. It wasn't there, so Stan White very smartly threw it out of bounds as Pat Dye confers with Randy Campbell. Second down and 10 at the LSU 45. Auburn down by a point, 43 seconds to go. Here they come. They're coming after him this time. Ball is caught inside the 35. Guess who? He's back. Fred Baxter. Those ribs and groin have another catch or two in them. And now they're within field goal range. They're at about 50-yard field goal range where the ball is right now. Stan White responded well to the pressure, stuck with Baxter, and Vince Fuller's on him. They'll give it to McMillan. He'll dive over the 30. There's the man, junior place kicker, Scott Etheridge. Three for four today, five of six on the year. But remember, LSU, pretty good on special teams last week. There's a guy in their backfield, Gary Pekis, who blocked a field goal against Mississippi State. Yep. And I think he also he stripped the, the ball from the punter, too, and then recovered that. I mean, he's been very active, and he has been very close on some of these field goals earlier in the game. Been coming around the outside. 
I really feel like uh, Tommy Bowden's going to try to put it in the end zone at least a couple of times before they just decide it's going to be a field goal. It'll be interesting to see what the defensive strategy of Mike Bugar is. Is he going to if is he going to stay with the pressure, or is he going to stay with the uh, eight-man drop? Second Whatever. Down and seven coming up from the 30. They'll restart the clock. Whatever he does, they better know where Fred Baxter is, because you could you could tell there's. These, some of these patterns are designed specifically to get the ball to him, and they've got they've got confidence in him, and they also like the matchup that they have with the with the more diminutive Vince Fuller locked into him man to man. Now run the draw to McMillan. He'll get five yards down to the 25. Now they're at 42-yard field goal range. 18 seconds to go, and Auburn calls a timeout. That'll be Auburn's second timeout called here in the second half. Now what agony for the LSU fans on the far side. They got the tremendous comeback, but ironically, did it happen too soon? Auburn has marched right down the field. We told you earlier, the last two games by these teams have been decided by less than five points. And it appears this one will as well, unless Auburn puts it in the end zone. I'd rather have, I'd rather have LSU's position at this particular point in time. You know, the Auburn fans uh, might be a little anxious also. We always hate it to come down to a last kick. Let's check in real quickly in the sidelines with Bob Kessler. Bob, one of the things Auburn's got to consider, according to the scoreboard, they're out of timeouts. If they don't make a first down here, the clock doesn't stop. Uh, doesn't, and so they might not have a chance to get the field goal unit in or get another play. This is a very big play coming up for Auburn. They have to get a first down or the game might be over. Third and two from the 18. White coming in. The other side of that, Bob, is you want to throw it to the end zone. You know, you want to try to see what happens. And if you do complete it, you complete it out of bounds. Or you, it's incomplete. It's on an incomplete pass. Of course, the clock will stop. Bob makes a good point, though. They really can't run the ball into the middle of the field to get it between the uprights. Now White will throw it up over the top. Thomas Bailey, the man out there. Good and job by Ray Adams playing a hitch. And it all comes down to this. Scott Etheridge onto the field. It'll be a 32-yard attempt, about three yards inside the far hash mark. Clay Helton is the holder for Etheridge. A 42-yarder to decide the game with 14 seconds to go. Where is Pegues? They're calling timeout here. LSU's calling timeout. timeouts does LSU have Bob LSU got two still left. has two to go they could ice the kicker another time or two and really give him something to think about <laughs> I'm sure his mind is filled at the moment you know <laughs> all these thoughts rushing through there that's where the big guys come up and say it's okay you miss it we won't hurt you bad Fourteen seconds to go. This is where the lines are filled to the man upstairs. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, these guys are calling and these guys are calling. <laughs> Gary Pegues, Mr. Block Kicker. He's on, is, the, he's on the left side of the line, just out of your picture at the moment. 42-yard attempt. Auburn down by a point. Fourteen seconds to go.
perfect snap. Helton gets it down, and he knows from the minute he hit it. That baby is good. Let's follow through. What did Pat Dye have to think about that? Uh, yeah. He's been around a long time, but he still gets excited about it, doesn't he? How could great, you great not? victory. How could you not? You bet. Edwards still hey, stomping around those sidelines. Great thing about this is he doesn't have to kick it off and maybe tackle somebody. He's got somebody else to handle the kickoffs. What a great job by Edwards. Brian Karkoska, the man now for Auburn. Etheridge, three out of four field goals today. And it'll be Karkoska, David Butler, and Jay Johnson. But it won't get that far. LSU trying to get out of bounds. And doing so with four seconds to go was flanker Mike Garrett. One play left for the LSU Tigers. What a bitter loss. But I'll tell you. They avoided making this a blowout loss. They came back to make this a fascinating ball game. And so I think they will prosper from this defeat. You know, there's often, I always said, I learned as much as I wanted to learn from losing by only losing one time, but they have learned a lot here. Last play of the game. The freshman quarterback scrambling. Nobody there. This thing is over and Auburn on the late field goal wins a classic against LSU. Auburn wins a beauty here, 30-28 with a late field goal over LSU. A hot day on the field and right down there is Bob Kessler. It's a win for your team. Well, it's, it's for these guys right here and, and uh, we needed this as bad as anyone that we've needed since I've been at Auburn, and uh, I just I'm happy for the players. They, they worked hard, and we hadn't won one like this in a long time. And the stand has taken a lot of criticism and a lot of heat, and and uh, you know he showed the, the the true Stan White coming down the stretch today at the end of the game, and and uh, you know we were conservative at times during the game today because of the nature of the game, and and I just. You know, I just wanted to win. I didn't care what it was like, whether it's pretty or ugly or whatever, but I just, I wanted to win and, and it, you know, but well, we won it. This guy here deserves a lot of credit. Did a great job. Scott, talk about the kick. Uh, it went through. That's all that matters. We won the game. I didn't do it by myself. Uh, defense played good. Offense played good. And we played solid special teams. So. And he's knocking a little bit, though? No, not really. They are now, though. I think I just realized what happened. Stan Rook, the drive was great. Oh, well, you got to give credit to LSU defense. They came out the second half and stopped us cold. And uh, when we had it, we had to get it in that end on that last drive, and uh, we just came through with it. Good job, guys. Thank you. Big win for the Auburn Tigers. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Players of the game, Jamie Howard, a couple of touchdowns, 8 for 18. Scott Etheridge, the big man for Auburn, with that right foot. Back after a word from your local stations. Auburn's Tigers playing here at home against the LSU Tigers were up by a bunch at the half. It looked like a blowout, but LSU came storming back. And our executive producer of JP Sports is Jimmy Rayburn. Tom Hewitt and Dave Furchett, our producer and director today. Coordinating producer of SEC football, Wendy Voigt, and today's game. And our game next week, South Carolina and Kentucky. That's the 26, 12:30 Eastern at 11:30 Central. We will see you from Commonwealth Stadium, the home of the Wildcats. Personnel outfitted on JP Sports Crew by Champion Products. And you've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference football. See ya from Auburn.